Okay, we are live. Well, good evening, folks. We're here this evening for the budget retreat. Um, Mr. Joyner, I'm going to put this in your hands and you can all go from there. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good to see everybody tonight. Good to see everybody's nice smiling face. I ain't seen y'all in a while. All right. Good seeing you too, brother. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, so uh, what I'd like to do is um, we've been uh, actually uh, in preparation for today, have been working very closely with uh, Janice Jackson. I think everyone's familiar with her and um, she's been helping us out and uh, getting our getting our act together here. And so I'd like to uh, go ahead and turn this over to Janice. And um, uh, Janice, you can just uh, go ahead and kick us off with, uh, with some of the things that we talk, uh, plan to talk about today, okay? Hello, everybody. I hope Hello. everybody is well this evening. Um, as Pliz indicated, I had a couple of uh, conversations with uh, a couple of our uh, council members to get a feel for what you all really wanted to cover tonight. Um, after having that, and I apologize first off for not being able to call each one of you, um, unfortunately due to the limited time frame, I was not able to get with get to everyone, but I think I have a pretty good feel for what the intent was this evening. Uh, one of the uh, things that, as we discussed, it appeared as if there was at least two matters of unfinished business. Uh, one of those being the 2020 budget amendment. I believe Travis Sims, our uh, uh, county manager, and I hope Travis is on now. I don't see him up here, but I assume he is on. Um, Travis be presented the budget amendments and started the discussion. Yes, I see him, he is here. Presented those in the last work session, one of the previous work sessions, and uh, we didn't finish that discussion. So I understand there's still a few questions in regard to that. We would need to get council approval, mayor and council approval on those. So we'd like to finish that off tonight. Um, at least I know you can't take a formal vote tonight because it's a workshop, but at least we can get all your questions out of the way so that that can be placed on a subsequent agenda. Also, I understand it was the intent of the council to look at uh, any further changes to the 2021 budget. Uh, the, the, I understand that there were some ideas and some things that uh, you all wanted to discuss that were not completed in the last budget discussion and you all would like to finish that tonight. So those are the two big items in between how, before and in between, I think there are a couple of important matters. One is to clarify something about 2021. Uh, I understand there was some confusion about what was really the approved budget. You may recall that the mayor and deputy city manager presented a recommended budget and then the council in a subsequent meeting had several questions and requests for changes. On October 29th, uh, Mayor Larry issued a revised budget and a budget cover letter uh, indicating that he had agreed to make several changes to that budget. So the point of clarity I would like to make is that what went in as the approved budget after that last meeting on, I believe, November 2nd was what was revised as of October 29th. So what went in as approved was not the initial budget that Mayor Larry started with. It was the budget that he uh, updated after conversation with you all in the budget workshops that we did have. Uh, I also want to clarify that we are prepared. I think Plez is prepared tonight to go through those changes if need be. So everybody understands what the starting point is for our discussion for the 2021 budget. Also, uh, after having a uh, discussion and looking at everything, I'll, I'll be uh, frank with everyone. Uh, when we first start talking about having a budget retreat, I had been asked to put together an agenda for that retreat. The idea for that budget retreat was that it would be for the 2022 year, so looking forward to the future of setting goals, objectives, and um, analyzing key issues such as our capital projects, uh, things like recreation and parks where you just approved a master plan, 
You've got uh, Public Works, the ongoing discussion with DeKalb County and what services you are to take over this year. And then we had the third issue related to the the new city hall building and the capital expenditures related to getting that ready. So those are some major capital items that will need to be dealt with. Um, in looking at what you are planning to do tonight, it does not appear as if that will fit into tonight's dis discussion. I think we've got enough on our plates to get through in regard to cleaning up 2020 and uh, looking again at any other items you all want to discuss for 2021, uh, but we still have to get ready for 2022. So, uh, Plez is going, has made the suggestion that we use the workshops that are on the calendar already for this year. You know, we changed our meeting format. So we've got those workshops on a monthly basis. We'd like to use those to continue budget discussion. So it looks like we've got the items to discuss tonight related to 20 and 21. It also uh, was apparent based upon my conversations that there are a number of questions in regard to the Jacobs contract and how things are laid out in comparison to your organizational chart um, and some general topics related to SPLOS project management and other topics related to accountability that, that I think the council needs to get a better understanding of. So after this meeting, what I will plan to do is have a conversations, hopefully I'll get a chance to talk to everyone this time around, um, have conversations about uh, what it is that you feel like you need clarity on uh, as it relates to next year's budget, as it relates to contract arrangements, anything else that, that you feel is kind of up in the air. We want to nail down all of those things in a subsequent workshop. And then following that, we'll have the budget uh, retreat, so to speak, that I had been asked to put together. And again, that would focus on your capital projects, looking at um, just making sure you understand just how we come up with revenue projections, how organizations period come up with revenue projections, uh, how you uh, develop a spending plan and the fact that that spending plan is supposed to reflect the priorities and goals of the elected officials of the organization. So we'll save that for the last um, workshop where we talk about this. I'm estimating that it's going to, this is the first of three to four sessions, depending upon how long it is that uh, we can stand to stay in front of a camera on Zoom. But um, so we're looking at now, end of January, looking at at least one in February, uh, and then have another in March, maybe into April, depending upon how much progress we make. So that is my recommendation, if you will, based upon my conversations with uh, those that I did have a chance to talk to, as well as the staff, and had several conversations in detail with them about the best way to go about this to make sure that you're in a good strategic position as it relates to meeting your goals for FY21, as well as FY22 and beyond as we get into capital projects planning. Normally that's a three to five year process. Uh, so we'd really be looking at long-term planning for on the capital side. Awesome. Okay. awesome. Uh, th thanks a lot, uh, Janice. Uh, does anyone have any questions uh, just uh, just at, at, a, at a very high level um, concerning uh, what, what we'd like to accomplish this evening and uh, going forward? Awesome. Um, he, you know, he, he, hearing none, um, we'll, we'll just uh, we'll continue to forge on. But uh, I do really want to reiterate that, you know, we wanted to take advantage of the opportunities of using a working session, uh, a, a meeting totally de de dedicated to to the working session and that, that kind of work. Uh, that, that was really the premise for, for the way we set up the meetings for this year. And um, so what we'd like to do is at the, you know, at the February meeting begin to, you know, so, sort of coalesce our agendas and uh, what we'd like to accomplish uh, dur during, those, uh, during those meetings at that time. So uh, why don't we go ahead and let's kick this off and uh, let's dive into the uh, budget, the uh, fiscal year 2020 uh, budget amendments. Uh, I believe everyone should have uh, re received that from uh, Mr. Sims. And uh, Travis, if you could uh, uh, come on live with us here and, um, and uh, lead, lead, lead that particular session. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, we 
went through the, the budget amendments at the January 11th um, work session, um, I sent out a revised, um, I guess, well, they were the same amendments this morning, but just for clarification um, sakes, just to show which fund um, all of the amendments were related to. Um, and I know um, Councilwoman Cobble had some questions regarding some of the amendments. Um, were there any more questions regarding the amendments? Travis, I did have um, some questions. Let me pull it back up. Um, and these, I'm these. This may be lingering from the last one you presented the first time. Um, <clears throat> the I thought I had an understanding that the some of the COVID expenses were we paid for them out of the general fund, right? Not out of the COVID fund. So we would be reimbursing the general fund from the COVID fund. That's correct. Okay. So when I look at the COVID fund, the number five on your sheet, um, what I what I don't see is that change. I don't see where we're taking, I guess, everything the all the way from the three eighty one all the way to the sixteen thousand seven hundred five that total, and moving that to the general fund, right? Because that's what we're reimbursing, right? We're taking the money that we spent on those expenses came out of the general fund and we're taking that from the COVID fund and reimbursing the general fund. Right. So basically the the 381 really down to the the 2980. I'm sorry, the 16705 um, are items that were spent out of the general fund. Right. So basically what I'm going to do is expense those items in the COVID fund and credit the expenditure line items in the general fund and then, you know, transfer the cash. So, so the transfer of cash is basically a balance sheet transaction. So there are no amendments needed for the transfer of the cash, if that makes sense. So the amendment here is to add the expenses. Well, I guess maybe it's add that's confusing me because if the expenses were in the general fund, why are we adding them to, I'm going to call well, it a COVID fund, but although I know that's not technically a fund, um, but we're adding them to that fund well, I put add here because, and, and you'll notice I used that for the URA fund as well, because there was no budget for those two funds. So you noticed, if you notice in the fund 100 amendments, I used the word move because we're just moving money from one line item to another because budgeted items already exist there. Right. Um, so for the COVID fund, I used add because essentially we're establishing a budget because there was no budget. Okay. And you know, uh, maybe I could have used a better term, but um, that's essentially what we're doing. It's, it's, I put add because everything here would be a new budget line item. Okay. And when, and when, so when I, let me see. Um, and so this is a question I had last time too is, so we're making an amendment to a budget that didn't exist previously. And technically the funds in that account, I mean, they're obviously separate from the general fund mm -hmm. and have already been expensed from that account. Correct. And although they're not 
broken out in this manner. Um, so I guess I guess that's where I'm having some trouble under following what we're doing because when I look at the check registry that you sent, obviously it doesn't look like this. So I guess I'm trying to understand how how we're separating this, right? Because when when we look at that account, it's a, it's it doesn't it's not broken out. It's not itemized this way. So right. I guess it would be easier for me to see that total. What what is this? Forty thousand ish? No, it's more. Yes. Than um. Yeah. Uh, yes. Some for I think forty six thousand somewhere there about. Okay. So if forty six thousand. See that that doesn't that still doesn't look like what the activity was in the account. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how. So, okay. So I think here's where you may be getting thrown off. So you're right. The, the accounts as they currently are, don't show these numbers because I, after, you know, hopefully council approves the amendments, I actually have to do journal entries to move all of these expenditures from the general fund to the COVID fund. So yes, those that activity does not show in those accounts currently. So I guess why are we just not reimbursing the general fund? Why are you doing a why are you doing it the opposite way? What do you mean why are we just not reimbursing the general fund? So if the expenses right now sit in the general fund, right? All 46,000 right. of these sit in the general fund? Right. right. So why aren't we just transferring, for lack of better words, 46,000 from the COVID account to the general fund? I am, doing I am going to do that, but to transfer the money, I need an offsetting entry in the COVID fund, which is these line items. Like I can't just transfer money to the general fund from the COVID fund and not record what the transfer was for. Right, yeah, no, I understand that. And since all of the expenses came from, or all the expenses, at least in the, in the account, came from the COVID program. So, so basically what happened, the, the general fund expenditures, when those expenditures were made, we didn't have any COVID money. So we couldn't use COVID money um, to, to, to make those purchases. So it's, it's almost like the COVID fund was borrowing money from the general fund. So that's why they're recorded in the general fund currently. So, you know, so now that the COVID fund has money or had money, um, you know, and I, we kept the $46,000 um, in the COVID fund. Now we can reimburse the general fund for those expenditures. Okay. <clears throat> it just gives me a little bit of pause to um, approve an amendment to one, a budget we never seen and never approved, two, um, that has more, that more lines are itemized more than what I can reconcile in the account. Um, and trying to understand, because I haven't seen how this is set up for, how you said, I don't know if you said it or somebody else set it up, but how the COVID fund has been set up in the, in the accounting system. I can't, it's hard for me to, so I said that, I guess it's hard for me to understand. So I set up the one. COVID fund, um, And these are the account numbers that I established. Now, what I sent you this morning 
probably these accounts probably didn't show up because they're all zero. I'm not sure. I didn't look to see if these account numbers showed up, but currently, you know, there is no zero. So it's perfect. There is no activity. So it's perfectly reasonable that those accounts wouldn't have showed up on that report. Okay. But long story short, you're reimbursing the general fund for the 46,000. Yes. And <clears throat> although this, these itemized, these lines are difficult for me to reconcile against what actually was the activity in the account. Um, in, a, in a nutshell, you're just re reimbursing the general fund. Yes, and, and I'm attempting to get connected to the server um, because I think what you're um, looking for is the detail of what makes up that $46,000 is what you want to see if I'm not mistaken. Um, well, yes, but not to see it, to see the way you set it up, yeah. So, so basically, I mean, what I did basically was I looked at what, what we, you know, what we purchased, what we spent money on. And I said, okay, you know, that's a supply or, you know, what have you. And I established account numbers based on that logic. Like, you know, um, I think we rented porta potties for the, um, for the COVID testing. That's what the 10,668 for equipment rental, you know, it will consist of that um, and so on and so forth. Um, so that was kind of where the, you know, the building improvement line was where we had some barriers installed in city hall. So it was just me looking at the purchases and determining where they needed to go. Travis, might I ask, interject and ask one question, please? The, sure. the, numbers, the numbers that you're adding up, you said you added from the 381 to the 16705? Um, yes. Now, I get 65899. You all keep throwing out a 46. I just want to make sure that I'm adding the correct, because I'm under the, the COVID fund. Uh, on your budget amendments, number five, from 381 down through 16705? You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. The, the 20980 should not be included in what we're reimbursing because the 20980 um, when we made that purchase, we actually had cash in the COVID account. And so that amount was made that purchase was made directly out of the COVID funds. So it's those line items minus the 20980 Okay. All right. I'm sorry so about that. Okay. All right. So Travis, so that's what, that's what I'm trying to, and we can, we can certainly move on and, and, figured this part out some other time, but I can see the 20,980 that the activity from the account. What I don't see is the other 46,000. I just see, so when you, when you say you want to reimburse the general fund, I don't see where, I see where we spent it in the general fund, obviously. What I don't see is where the funds are coming from, from COVID to reimburse it. Because when I look at the activity from the account, there's only three places that money went. One of them is the 20,000. So, right. so, so where that's is the what money I'm... coming from that's going, that's reimbursing the general fund? Where is the money going? 
the money is the money going, coming from that we're reimbursing to the general fund? The money is coming out of the COVID account, like right now. So, so you know, we had six million and something odd dollars um, of COVID money. Right, six point two. Right, we gave away the majority of it. And so right now there's $46,000 and whatever that number is still sitting in the COVID fund. Okay. All right. That's what I, okay. All right. Thank you. That's where, when you, when we were saying the money was gone, we spent all the money, there's nothing else there. I was trying to figure out where the 46 oh, okay. was coming from. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so we yeah, gave so up I'm, all but the 46. Okay. Right. All I right. left $46,000 right. in, in there. Okay. All right. I'm good then. Thank you. Travis, I have something that is probably um, minute, but just for my understanding, and I think I asked it once before, I don't know where I put my note. Um, on the number four, is, uh, there's a note that says these budget amendments are to cover the cost of uh, the proceeding Oh, of the processing of the uh, property tax bill and the cost of purchasing cell phones for all of the employees during COVID. Uh, the cost of purchasing the cell phones, uh, laptops, uh, whatever other uh, paraphernalia was necessary to work uh, remotely, is that a cost that we bear directly or is that one that uh, Jacob would bear and we would reimburse Jacob? Uh, how does that work? We bear that cost directly. So okay, so, so all of that. So so right now, um, all the employees have cell phones. That's basically what that cost is. So all the employees have cell phones. So you know, if I were to leave tomorrow, I would turn this cell phone into the city. It would be the it's the city's phone. Okay. All right. I think I asked that once before, and I didn't. Uh, get it straight then. So I think I understand you now and I can follow up. So all of that paraphernalia is purchased by the city for Jacob employees use. And we don't have to worry about reimbursing them for any additional cost that they might, that their employees might have encountered. Right. Okay. But does it also include our phones, council phones? Uh, that's probably a question for Megan. No, Robbie probably does not. I think I'm those here. are phones that they got during COVID. Yeah, these are just the phones that we got during COVID. Your phones were already accounted for. Okay, good. Okay, thank you. Uh, may I ask a question, Megan? Not that it really matters, but are these phones using the same service that we're using? Yes, they're all through Verizon Wireless. Okay, all right, thank you. You're welcome. Travis, sorry, lastly, I remember, and I can't remember if it was during this conversation or something related to this, but you were mentioning that um, we were trying to get some, some real numbers or you were working with the county about um, I believe it was property taxes that we paid a property tax um, or they at least they requested that we pay a property tax and we were trying to true up yes. that number. Were you able to get some something final on that? I don't. So, so I went on the property tax website and they, they have zeroed out some of the bills. Um, and I keep calling asking when are we going to receive our money? And, you know, they keep saying it's coming. We're behind from, you know, COVID, you know, I guess the, the way the staff is staggered and they're saying they're just behind. So I'm still just kind of waiting on the county. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other budget amendment questions? I'm sorry. Councilman Turner. Councilman. Talking. There you go. Now, uh, just one other small one. 
uh, in the SPLOS Fund. That was a movement to cover uh, road paving. Can you explain that? It says uh, this budget amendment uh, is to cover the cost of transportation master plan and the project uh, uh, management services for a road uh, uh, payment. Yes, so uh, we, we did a transportation master plan last year and I don't believe... Yeah, want, want me to take this, Travis? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I just stepped away, I was somewhere else in the house. Um, and uh, if, if you could just, just, just repeat your question, uh, Councilman. Uh, the item that uh, for road paving, there's a, there was a transfer. I said the budget, the budget amendment is to cover the cost of the transportation master plan and project management services. And that was to the tune of how much? Well, I, I think I can answer what you're getting at, though. So, so basically, the SPLOS, the way it was budgeted, um, I think there were two different departments that were budgeted in, in SPLOS. And basically, I think what happened was the amount of the contract, of the paving contract was budgeted, I believe, but it didn't cover um, the transportation master plan and then the other services associated with the road paving. Um, so I was just moving money down from one of the other departments and from that other department in SPLOS, which I believe was parks, um, down to cover those additional administrative costs. Yeah. Okay. And so, so what, uh, and, uh, Councilman, uh, what we'll do is, um, I, I'll be honest, I, I have not um, gone through all of these amendments in, in detail. Um, but uh, give, give me an opportunity to look at the SPLOS line items here um, because the, uh, the, the transportation master plan and all of our paving um, were, um, were to come out of our SPLOS um, account. So um, I, I, just mean just, I just need to sit down with Travis and go, go through that and make sure, make sure that we're all on the same page with that, okay? Yeah, well, I was you know, just really curious as to, I thought we had put aside money to cover the uh, master plan you, you are you are exactly right, and uh, that's that's why I need to sit down with with Mr. Sims and make sure we're all on the same page here. Okay. 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 Alrighty. That's it for me on this item. Any other questions? Okay. Mr. Joyner, I turn it back over to you. You're on mute, please. Okay. I just gave the Gettysburg address and y'all didn't even hear it. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so actually, I, just, I was just thanking Travis for all his hard work. Uh, Travis uh, came 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 to us under some very uh, difficult uh, situation uh, this this past summer, and he re really helped us right the ship. And as y'all can see, uh, d just done a yeoman's job in um, in working with our budget and clearing up our stuff from 2020, getting us ready for 2021, and and also uh, uh, definitely we'll be leaning heavily on him and Gia as we go into 2022. Uh, the next item that we have on our agenda was to talk about the uh, changes, uh, some, some updates for the fiscal year 21 budget. Um, and uh, we just wanna make sure that we're all on the same page as, as we move forward from here. Um, if, if you recall, we, we released the budget, the 2021 budget was released in early October, um, October 1st to be exact. Um, and somewhere in, in, in during the middle of October, of course, we had our public hearing, and then we had the meeting uh, with, with, with the council to review uh, your suggested uh, changes to that. 
Subsequent to that, on October 29th, uh, the mayor uh, and I published a updated, um, basically a updated transmittal letter to go along with it that incorporated uh, a fair amount of the changes that, that were requested. So what I'd like to do this evening is, um, you know, work our way through that, make sure that, that we've uh, captured uh, your concerns and uh, see if there's um, so some additional uh, changes that, that, that may be warranted as well, okay? Uh, Please, are you going to start by going back over the October 30th budget that yeah. you all presented? Yeah, yeah, would that that that'll help? Uh, how, how about if I go through the the trans letter uh, yeah. that I that I sent out, and then 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 we can then we can work work our way from there. Okay. Okay. Um. Adrian, is it? Can I go? Can I share my screen? And I'd just like to pull that up, and uh, so we can all see, all sing, sing from the same hymnal here. Uh, yes. So everyone should now be able to see the October 29th, 2020 um, uh, to the members of the city council. Uh, and uh, I'll briefly, I'll, I'll just run through these um, and I'll let you take a gander at this. So, um, and I'll just uh, re recount for those who, who may have some trouble reading uh, what's on the screen. I'll, let me blow it up a little bit as well. So attached is the final proposed fiscal year 2021 annual budget for the city of Stonecrest that will be presented for your approval on Monday, November 2nd, 2020. The notable updates that were discussed at the April 28th, 2020 fiscal year budget workshop are as follows. Um, first of all, we started with the uh, mayor and council budget. So the, the department's name was changed from council to mayor and city council. The salary line was adjusted to 205,000. This update includes the salaries for the mayor, city council, and a council chief of staff position that was added to assist all council members with constituent services. The mayor and city council salaries are governed by the city charter and will only, ch will only change with the action by the Georgia General Assembly. The position of internal auditor will be added to the mayor and city council budget after a salary study is complete. Using best practices employed by other municipalities, all expenditures for the city's burgeoning film authority, marketing, permitting, and programming have been transferred to the mayor's budget. To encourage more district-based programs, the council initiatives line item was increased to $25,000, thereby providing each council member with an allocation of up to $5,000 for their council initiatives. The city events line item was renamed to mayor initiatives and was reduced to $50,000 and the professional services line item was reduced to $60,000 as portions of those budgets will reside in various city departments that can better leverage their expertise in program development, i.e. the money was moved to communications, community and cultural affairs, economic development, etc. Um, so why don't I stop right there and um, let's see if we have any questions or concerns or anything concerning the, uh, the mayor and council budget portion here. I have a question in I reference to the, okay. I'm sorry. sorry. Go on, ladies first, go on. No, 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 I couldn't find my mute button, so go ahead. <laughs> uh, I have a question concerning the, uh, I guess the film authority or hopefully the Bludgering Film Commission. Uh, now is that, where is exactly is that budget under or who exactly, what line item is that budget under? Is it economic development or the office of the mayor or where is it exactly? Uh, it's, it was moved to the office of the mayor. Um, let me, let me do this. Let me open up. Let me also open up the, uh, the budget as well, okay.
Okay. Um, okay, let me get over here and share my screen. Okay, this will all. Yeah. Okay. Uh, does everyone now see the um, uh, see, see see the budget with the uh, with expenditures at the top there? And let me scroll down here. So we're looking at, um, if you recall, the uh, th this is that professional services line item here that was, that was. Uh, reduced to sixty thousand dollars from what was proposed. Uh, I'll be honest; I'm not quite sure what what the original amount was, but it was it was it was a bit more than that. And then here, uh, Councilman Turner, uh, your request about here's the film marketing, film permitting, and film programs, and those are at thirty thousand, five thousand, and twenty thousand respectively. Sorry. Okay, so I'm an understanding then that what we are talking about in reference to the budget of those three components is just $55,000 for the budget. Uh, we're not including the professional services amount? Uh, the professional services uh, would be for some other um, items. I'm not quite sure what, what those items would, would, would entail. But so for right now, excuse me, Kenyuff, so right now we're just looking at $55,000 for the uh, proposed film commission, the Stonecrest Film and Entertainment Commission. Correct, correct. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Okay. And again, okay. it's coming out of, it's coming from under the mayor and council? Yes, the, this, okay. is all under the, this is all under the mayor and council um, section of, of the uh, budget. Right, I see it. Okay, thank you. Okay. And then so, we all- So, Clez, let me, let me ask you on that same subject before we move. Um, so the previous amount that was there, by the way, was two hundred thousand. Um, okay. So it's reduced to sixty, but I would imagine that that professional services line is not strictly for the professional services needed for film and entertainment. Is that correct? Uh, no, I don't think that that's. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Mayor, uh, but that would not be. I don't. I don't think any of that. That's correct. The professional, the professional services line is not for film and entertainment. As uh, as we marked those three other areas, as uh, Councilman Rob Turner mentioned, um, the uh, film marketing, film permitting, and film programs, that is for a film committee. That's, that's, that's the money that's related to that. And the professional services, whether it's $60,000, that is for um, uh, the Mayor's Office of Pro uh, Professional Services. Okay, so let me ask you something else back on, on the three film um, items before we dive too far into professional services. Um, we have 5,000 for film permitting. That is what we expect to spend in film permitting is 5,000? That was my understanding. Okay, Councilman Turner, is that? Yeah, we're looking at that as software and different other uh, items coming for film permitting. We're not looking at any type of uh, monies coming in for that, just the expenditures for it right there for the 5,000. Okay. Um, so in programming, 20,000, marketing, 30,000. Okay. Uh, so I know when we were in our film committee meetings, we were talking about our budget and, and what we needed. Um, we needed to, we need to add some more to these lines so that um, the film committee can actually um, fulfill uh, its goals and desires for the year. Um, so if, if we're at 55 right now, and um, I'm not sure that even that breakout, maybe, maybe permitting is correct, uh, Councilman Turner, but I think that the permitting and the programs is still a little, just not aligned with, um, what our vision was for, for the committee. However, we still do need some additional funds to, to take care of the consulting and the other administrative services that are gonna come with uh, the film and entertainment initiatives. And, and to your point, Councilwoman uh, Cabo, that's very, very true because of the influx of films now and television productions is coming to the city because literally California is closed. It's an overwhelming opportunity for us to take advantage of that, but we must have the revenue in place to secure all the uh, permitting and all the uh, other uh, 
expenditures and things we need to do to come together with collaboration with uh, studios and different things like that, working to develop an um, entertainment zone for the city, those kind of things. So we do need to increase this, I would say, up to all close to $100,000. So uh, uh, Councilman Turner uh, yeah. and Councilwoman Cobble, um, um, that's, a, that's a, another conversation we're going to have to have because there is a, we're in the middle of a pandemic and they're not bringing film and film opportunities to this area, uh, not as quite as fast and hard as we, we may think. Uh, if we look back at last year's, what we paid out with regards to what we brought in, uh, we paid out you know, five to one uh, as to what we spent uh, for personnel and marketing with regards to you know, revenue that we brought in you know, for, that, you know, for that service. So as the, as the film and uh, entertainment issue is, 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 is now in my office, then Councilman Turner, as you're, you being chair, you and I have to have a detailed sit down about you know, what we're gonna go to from here. And I'll be more than happy to do that, Mayor. And also, I'll bring you some statistics in reference to the increase even during this pandemic because, of the, uh, like I said earlier, the influx of films coming because production is moving forward. It might not be as strong as it was uh, prior to the pandemic, but it is growing and establishing itself, and we need to be ready and prepared for it. So I'll be more than happy to sit down and move because we want to establish a commission where we have the uh, monies in place that we can do the things that we need to do for the strategic plans that we have for the film commission. And I'll submit that to you as well as to all the other council members to ensure that we all have an understanding about that. Thank you. And if I can, if I can just add to that, so let me, first let me ask a question, I guess maybe to Travis. Um, so we broke out film into permitting, marketing, and programs. Um, is uh, one, two, three, four. So I'm going to assume that maybe we need to, since we're breaking it out this way, do we need to add a line? Um, because n neither of those three categories um, consider the administrative cost or programming, including any consulting um, that the film commission may need to um, enter into. None of those three category or lines rather um, consider that. So yeah, you, when we do add- Councilwoman, it's- uh, Say that again, sorry. 34 does that. 30 film marketing? Correct. Con help me with that. The film marketing because is going to cover the film marketing administrative costs. The film marketing covers the administrative costs and the consulting costs for the, the actual uh, individual uh, to be able to go out and, and uh, do exactly that market uh, and bring uh, bring that business back to Stonecrest. There's not a there's not a there's not a separate uh, nor do we need a separate line item to pay somebody extra for that. This is a uh, and by its core. Uh, during this pandemic, uh, uh, this is part time. That same that same line item from last year, you know, we paid out forty one thousand, forty four thousand and change, and uh, we didn't see nearly that revenue that was coming in. So um, I've already had a conversation with our contractor with regards to that, and uh, being able to um, hold a line as to what we're doing budget wise uh, with this opportunity. And I, and I understand that too, Mayor, but again, we need to consider initiatives as well as memberships and other things that's more, that's a part of the, I guess, overall picture of film marketing and film production for the city. It's just more than just having somebody come in and, and do a film in your city or whatever. So uh, we want to establish a base, a, a structure, an infrastructure to build upon because we have a wonderful opportunity like the CAP uh, Film and Entertainment Commission to strengthen this this uh, opportunity we have in the city. So we do need to sit down, uh, I would say immediately so we can move forward on this because uh, time is of the essence in reference to what we need to do to, to capture this opportunity that we have. Thank you, sir. Being that it's out of uh, my office, I'm more than happy to sit down with you. All right, thank you. Um, and just, just so, because we're talking about this and we're gonna obviously make recommendations to, um, to the budget and what we'd like to see, I'm gonna go ahead and make a recommendation that we add um, 40, is it 45? What are we at now, Rob? 55? We're at 55. So I'm going to make a recommendation that we add 30. 35,000. So that would be um, a 90. Right. And okay. we would go ahead and add 35,000 
um, to the film. I guess we don't need to add it to mark to, to permitting. Um, no. Um, but we to split that in the in the way that we have it budgeted from the film committee, um, so that we can, um, you know, reach the goals of our programming uh, desires. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that recommendation that we add thirty five thousand um, between those two lines. Right. Do you want so to? We can cover what we need. Do you want to split it seventeen five in each one, or twenty in one and fifteen in the other? I I, I don't think it really really matters. I think it's because it's all going to pretty much come out of the same pot, pretty much in reference to the marketing and the programming component of it. So I, right. I think it's fine whether we put 15 in one and uh, 20 in the other. All right. Right. all right, Councilman Turner. Now, you know how detailed uh, Travis Sims with this is. So uh, OK, I'll tell you what, let's do 20. Do a whole bunch 20 of budget yeah. later. Let's do 20 in marketing and 15 yeah, in programming. That's fine. That's fine. I don't want Travis yeah, on my doorstep and stuff. <laughs> Please don't put Travis under any more no, stress. I don't want, mm -mm, thank you. I, I, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. So, so we're going to go 15 uh, to film marketing and 20 to film programs. Other way okay. around. Oh, see there? Uh, <laughs> we need to film marketing, taking that up to 50, and then 15 to film programs, taking that to 35. Right. Right. Okay. And we'll leave the permitting at five. Right. So while we're on that line item, uh, Mr. Joyner, where we have. Uh, 52120 professional services. Yes, uh huh. You can you can make that 120 instead of 60. Okay. So we're saying um, professional services goes from 60 to 120. That's correct. And it was at 200. Um, and then I think you reduced it to 60. Um, so are you moving that 60 from wherever you took it from the first time and putting it back there? I'll have Travis to find it wherever he moved it to. Okay. And then, so what professional services are you, at, are we looking at to add there for that 60? Uh, out of the mayor's office, what I think that I need with regards to professional services. Understood. Is you, Thank do you. Do you have an idea of what that is? That's my answer, ma'am. I appreciate you. Okay. So I would re recommend that we do not add that 60000 to the professional service. Uh, I'm, I'm going to override your recommendation. I'm well, gonna it's just a recommendation. Put the, well, um, well, my recommendation, Mr. Joyner, uh, 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 is if we're taking film up, I'm taking my professional services back to where it was and pick, pick that number to 120. And Mayor, just so you know, it's not because we don't want to, just we gave a very lengthy explanation on why the film committee needed those extra funds. The film committee has put a budget together for what its desires are for the year. And so I just simply ask that you would just give us some understanding of what the extra 60 was for. So we understood what the professional services ideas and goals and initiatives are. So, I mean, it wasn't, and I, I, I would hope that you wouldn't think that just adding the 60,000 with no explanation was not gonna spark an interest to understand what that 60 was. But the, I mean, that's the only reason why I'd recommend not putting it in there because we actually don't know what that is. So well, as you had mentioned earlier, Councilwoman, it was at 200 at first. So I'm gonna take it to 120 instead of 60. Uh, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, and as I had mentioned to Councilman Rob Turner, um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even sure what your recommendation is is going to pan out to be able to make film uh, the way it's supposed to be. Uh, so with that, I'm going to leave my statement as it is to add 60 uh, back to professional services, and that's what my statement is. No problem, sir. I will leave mine mm -hmm. on the books as well, um, and then we'll just wait for it. Um, we'll just wait for the vote and see where we land on everything. Um, on the, across the board. So please, if you don't mind, can I, can we, um, I don't, I know you were talking about this one area right here. So I don't want to move away from this before we get to some of the other things, but I don't want to cut you off if there were some other things you want to bring to our attention in this section. Um, and so oh, if you no, do, no. feel free. If not, I'll dive into some of the other areas here. Okay. Uh, in, in that section me. though, so don't, don't move yet. Uh -oh. Thank oh. you for yeah. bringing that spreadsheet up for us. Thank you, I appreciate that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so um, in the, where did you go? On my side, it's still moving. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's freaking me out. Um, in the salaries line, you mentioned two things. Um, you mentioned 
a, I think you mentioned a position for, I'm sorry, I'm trying to pull your letter back up. Um, yeah, so uh, can everyone see the letter now? Uh-huh. Letter up? Yes, it's up. Okay, okay. Great, great. So that's working. So the very at the very beginning here, uh, the salary line was just as 205. It's updating salaries for mayor, council, and a council chief of staff position that was added to assist all council members with their constituent services. Um, so was was that um, so our salaries total what 95? 15 times five, yeah, 95. So the one, um, you said one, the salary line was adjusted to, oh, staff position. So I'm assuming it's just one because position is not plural. Um, is Are you recommending that that salary is 110,000 for that one constituent individual, which makes up the 210 from the it, 95? It also, it also includes the mayor's salary as well. And okay, what number is that? Uh, did, I, did, did, what on From That's 20 the number to 75. What? From 20 to 75? It could be from 20 to 175. No, I didn't hear you, I'm just asking you, it's, is that what you just said? That's I'm just asking you to repeat it. <laughs> yes, that's, that's what it was. It was from 20 to 75. And okay. y'all was fine. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying to calculate. So what was the recommended salary for the one position? Put on here. I'm seeing 35. And that was one full-time person? Yes, uh -huh. yes, yes. Okay, so I know that, you know, the last time we um, talked about adding um, some personnel for constituent services for the council, we had first proposed um, five individuals, one for each of us. Um, and I, you know, I think we had some healthy dialogue back and forth about that. Um, so trying to consider the dialogue and some of the constituent input, you know, we received from that uh, budget hearing. Um, we wanted to see, you know. Uh, Councilwoman, you broke up just a little bit. There. Uh oh, sorry, can you hear me? I heard you say count, uh, constituent input and then, then, you, then, you're for, then you froze there. Oh, okay. Um, from the healthy discussion we had about that at that budget hearing, and then we had some constituent feedback after that, um, we wanted to, you know, really try to figure out how we can mend both worlds together and still get the, the help that the council needs, but also um, something that was reasonable for the budget. So we thought maybe we would do, instead of having five full-time employees, um, which let me pull up the other budget that we worked on that day, because I think our number was for those five employees, it was like 440,000. So instead of adding that number, we thought maybe we'd, we could accommodate two full-time staff and one part-time and, and share that between all five of us. So that essentially gives everyone a part-timer. Um, so if you have two full-time and one part-time, that's three people to help five of us kind of on a part-time basis um, that that would kind of be a good mend of both worlds. We wouldn't have five full-timers, but we'd have more than one full-timer to, to divide out between five people. So it's two full-timers and one part-timer for the, for the five of us. And, and I believe, uh, uh, and I think our issue that, that we had the last, when we originally received it was there just wasn't room in the budget for you know four or five full time folks. So um, if if we're proposing uh, basically two and a half, if, if I hear correctly, you're proposing two and a half FTEs basically to cover constituent services for the council. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And I mean, it, 
we definitely think there's room in the budget. I mean, there are some other things that our recommendations um, adjusted that accommodated for that. Mm -hmm. um, but as we go along, I think as we yeah, finish up yeah, here, we'll be able to. We're, we're taking, you know, right now, we're just, we're just listing out all the recommendations, correct? So um, our recommendation note taker is is uh, ma making a note of that do we do we have a recommended um salary for for this person uh, we, we're looking at sort of like an like an admin type of position for that well you mentioned that you had already budgeted for thirty five thousand for mm -hmm. one full-timer um so although just, just let it ride and two two and a half times that Well, it's hard for me to eat on thirty-five thousand, but if we can, yeah, we can I find would, some something competitive. <laughs> that would probably be better. I would definitely ask for more than that for a full-time person who's going to be split because that's that's barely eighteen dollars an hour. Um, so, if we're looking to do it that way, uh, which may be a little more reasonable and palatable to our budget, I would look, I would ask that we increase that salary maybe at least to 40 in so 40 years. Things I want to ask if, uh, if I can jump in here. A um, couple of three things. One is that um, out of the mayor's office, I cover 55,000 folks with one full time chief of staff. Out of the commissioner's office, uh, using Lorraine Cochran Johnson as an example. She covers 375,000 people with three people. And I don't understand why one chief of staff couldn't cover the five of you uh, in, in a district that are 10,000 people each. Well, we're, well, one, that would be dividing, that would take all five districts, right? So that's five people for for one person to handle constituents services but so and, and we're not now we're not asking for five full-time so really this is a half a person per person and i'll make my point again i have one person that does exactly the same that covers the entire city and um what would these this, these person's job descriptions be? Who would they report to? Where would they sit? Because we have no room for them here at City Hall. Um, uh, we're on top of each other as it is. And uh, I think the prudent thing to do would be, particularly since we're in a pandemic, is to be able to go with this first full-time person first, see how that works out, and then move forward from there. That would be the prudent thing to do. Let me say that. Um, let me say that um, a lot is being done virtually now, and you're looking at a new city hall. I'm not sure what the date of bringing a new city hall online, but there will be plenty of space. And uh, you need someone who can be directly responsible to the individual, I understand the number of constituents might be a measuring uh, tool as well, but uh, to have someone who can work directly with council and do the necessary research that council has to do and interact with staff, I think would be uh, beneficial and to have a, a half a person I don't think is asking too much. In fact, uh, we tried this once before with uh, nearly a half and, and and there was an issue with scheduling um, that one person to handle two or three council members at, uh, at one time so it just wasn't given enough time to see how it could best be utilized so and i'm not sure it would start right away uh but hopefully before the year is out well a couple of things to your point councilman one we won't be finished with City Hall this year for us to move into to be able to to have folks to to sit around. We'll still be we'll still be where we are today, and um, 
my sense of things since that I'm full-time and my chief of staff is full-time and we answer all the calls here. We take all the, 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 the situations with regards to just about everything that happens along with our call center. Um, uh, you all don't have enough work volume for two and a half people. Um, uh, and uh, again, I think that with uh, one full-time person, you'll find out exactly, you know, what you have um, uh, with regards to work product and what's going to be happening there. Also, somebody mentioned that uh, what the uh, healthy input was from the citizens. Uh, every email uh, I got was uh, a flaming no. Uh, not only was it a flaming no, the question begs, what are you all going to be doing? if you have uh, these people in place doing what? So I'm just giving you the input back that the, the constituents gave me. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll stand again by saying, I think the most prudent thing to do is to uh, have a chief of staff for the city council uh, that, that, that covers you all, as I have a chief of staff that covers me because we're talking about covering the, the whole city. Oh, and, 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 and as you can attest, people think you have a light workload, but they don't know what all goes on behind the scene that keeps you busy, seem like 24-7 as a part-time uh, position. And the same thing uh, exists here. There are a lot of things we want to get done that time simply does not permit in this 24-7 part-time position. And we understood what we are getting into when we got it, but we want to provide more uh, in order to provide more, we're going to need some assistance. And if used uh, correctly, uh, for which we would have to put together a plan to make sure that that is done, such that um, we get the best bang for the buck, so to speak. And uh, in terms of the salary, I think um, market uh, a little market research would kind of suggest where that salary should land. I wouldn't want to just arbitrarily pick a number. Okay. Well, you mentioned part-time. You, you all are part-time. I'm not. Yes. Thank you, sir. Well, that's been debated, but I don't want to go into that right now. It's no problem. It's right there in the charter what it is, so thank you. Yes, it is. Well, Mayor, I'd like to um, respond to um, your uh, statement, and that is most, I guess, comforting to know that you have someone who covers you uh, full time. We'd like to have some assurance that we have someone who could um, cover us as well. And so my request still remains to have uh, the either the two part time and one full, I mean, two full time and one part time or a part time that is just for uh, District 5. Um, so using that analogy, Councilwoman, um, you're right. I do have a full-time person that covers me, uh, which is Miss Settles, along with running Stonecrest Cares and everything else. So she works exceptionally hard. Um, and um, I'll go back to, you know, my original statement. I don't think that it's been justified where you would be able to have two and a half times people when you can uh, try one full-time person that's focusing on uh, you all spy. Uh, five individual needs, you know, for your city. So that's, that's uh... Let me just say this to Mayor, because I know a lot of times people don't, because they don't see us at City Hall at, at certain activities, does not mean that we're not working, we're not busy, we're not out with our constituents making things happen. I know for a fact with uh, the population that I have, I'm very involved and very active, but sometimes things fall through the crack. That's why we need an assistant or somebody that can make sure that all those things are covered. Uh, we just want to make sure that we are accessible and available to our constituents and providing them with the information and everything that they need uh, to see what's going on with the city. It's not that, you know, we just want somebody to say we have somebody walking around with us or doing things for us, but this is an efficiency uh, request. And that's what we want to make sure that uh, there's an understanding that we want to be efficient and effective in the job that we're doing, and we need assistance to make that happen. So not disagreeing with you at all, Council. Uh, matter of fact, uh, you and I and Councilman Clanton work together the most. So I, I, I know for sure what it is that you do. My, my point to council is start with one full-time person. Start with one full-time person. 
and then you'll know what your needs are from there. Right now, you 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 don't know uh, what your needs are from this area. And as and as for uh, staff is concerned, while we 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 have them online, uh, who would those people work for? Who would they report to? They don't report to they don't they don't report to council. Council doesn't have employees. They'd be part of staff. Well, I think we can. I think we can sort out. Um, we can sort that out. Um, there's many different options there. Um, but please, I, I, so I'm going to go ahead and make a recommendation um, not to continue um, on this same subject because I think I think we kind of know where we want to go. Um, so I'm going to recommend that we make that line 230,000. That's going to be 15,000 for each council member, uh, which is what it is now plus the 20,000 for the mayor's salary, which is what it is now. And then we're gonna add the 135,000 uh, for the two full-time and one part-time. So please, I'm not dropping my salary to 20,000 for the budget. My, my salary is gonna stay budgeted at 75,000. Uh, she can add what she wants to add, but I'm not dropping mine. Um, uh, it, is, uh, um, it is past time that I'm treated uh, fairly, and the, the mayor's office is treated fairly, no matter if it comes to local legislation or um, <clears throat> or uh, home rule. But I'm not I'm, you, I'm not dropping mines. And I think we most of us would agree that um, the legislators increase that uh, salary for you, then it'll be a no-brainer uh, to make sure that number you know, is there. Um, our recommendation is that until such time that it would remain what the charter says. Um, but now yeah. we'll Thank take you that for as it comes. But Thank please, you for your input. Would add the, mm -hmm. Sure, I'm not, I'm, if you let me finish. Thank I'm you for your input, uh, Councilwoman, but it's going to stay. You're welcome. Uh, if you me. let me finish, I would greatly I appreciate that. If you would please add the um, hundred and, let me calculate that one more time. 135,000 uh, for the two full-time and one part-time uh, for the five council members to split. Uh, that would be our recommendation. So just so that the minutes reflect or the notes reflect that we're asking for that line to, to be a total of 230,000. Um, obviously you'll put whatever um, you're directed to put there, but the recommendation is to put the total as 230,000. So I'll say this again. Uh, whether it's through local legislation or home rule, uh, I'm going to be uh, seeking this opportunity for me to be treated fairly, not just myself, but to anybody that's in the mayor's position. I'm not dropping it one nickel. Um, so if you want to add with regards to what you want with your two and a half people, that's fine, but you're not dropping mines. Okay, dokie. Okay. I think our uh, our recommendation note taker has. Uh... 40 that and uh, let, let, let's move let's 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 move this along here okay so um I was going to say all hearts and minds are is one but let, let's let's move on to the next uh can, can we move to the next section uh, please give me three seconds let me catch up my spreadsheet uh -oh. to yours oh yeah I'm sorry so I, I've I've not I've haven't moved the spreadsheet or anything, and uh, unfortunately this is a, this is a this is a uh, PDF file, so I'm I'm not making the updates here. Uh, we have some folks taking notes here. Sorry, I'm just triple checking, making sure we didn't have any more notes in this section before. I know we had a, so I think we had a really good discussion um, the last time about how we separated out the um, allowances, the expenses, the training and travel. Um, I didn't see that you mentioned that in your letter, um, but we did talk about, we tried to sort through, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger on my end, I'm sorry. 
we tried to sort through and make sure that we had that ironed out. So just want to triple check that we do, um, okay. that we decided the. So if you're, if you can, you know, while looking at this, you'll see that the travel expense was 25,000 last year and we've changed it to, uh, we, we did it by district. So district one, district two, district three, district four, district five each gets a thousand dollars. The mayor has a travel expense of three thousand uh, dollars. Similarly, we did the same thing with uh, the education and training. Um, each person gets one thousand um, dollars, including including the mayor. So the uh, the training, education and training, comes out to six thousand dollars. Are we all... I had a note that that had been moved up to fifteen hundred, or was that just my note? Well, what I'm trying to reconcile is we had we had a discussion in about the charter, the charter's expense account. The I'm sorry, the charter designates our expense account at three thousand for us, I think, and five thousand for the mayor. Right, right. And, and then so what you all did was take that 3000 and split it between education and tra education and training, travel, and, and then, then this committee, committee support. support. Right. So we talked about that, that, so our expense account should not be eaten up by training and travel. I mean, travel and education, that the, the expense account, that those things should be separate, that our expense account should be just that expenses that we can use to um, carry out our duties in our district and that training and education and travel should not be required to come out of that. And I think, as a matter of fact, I think Joel was on the line then and supported that, that um, those are not things that should be, that, that should eat out, eat away from our expense account. So are, are you, are you um, suggesting that we should um, leave uh, the travel education where they are at a thousand bucks and then increase the committee support to 3000 for each, for each district? I believe that's what we discussed. Hold on, I'm trying to look through my notes here and see what we had settled on. Yeah, I'm trying to find my stickies because something's not right. So my note has 1500 for all five of us for education and training, all six of us rather, one, two, three, four, four, five, six, for education and training. And let's scroll, where's travel? Travel remained at a thousand. And I think we were just anticipating that there still wouldn't be a lot of travel in the pandemic year. Um, right. That we may pick up some virtual training. So the education and training needed to be a little bit more because we may, you know, do a little bit more of that since we don't have to spend time traveling. Um, and then. Or, or, were, or, were, or were we expecting uh, this pandemic to end at uh, Christmas? That would be nice. That would be really nice. And then, so what do we have? My note for committee support mm -hmm. is 1100 for all five. And then the expense line. So this, this may be, my notes may be different because I don't think the expense line was there. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going back to yours now to compare. Um, so we, we don't even have a travel, we don't have an expense line in here. I think think we put that as committee support. Um, I think you did put in a council expense of 15,000 total. It was somewhere, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure out where. That's further down. If you, if you scroll down further, um, I think in that council initiatives, we added money there. Mm. That's not for expense. That's not our expense account, though. 
No, that's not your expense accounts, but someone mentioned adding 15,000 and that's where that was added. That's, that's, um, that's, that's why that's ballooned. If you notice that's up to $25,000 and last year was 6,000. Right, and I think we, we asked for that because we had hopes that we could actually have some true council um, initiatives. So, um, like we talked about, we did um, the census, right? So that wasn't something that we knew at the time we were planning the budget, what kind of involvement it would be. Say it again. To do thing. So each council person gets $5,000 under council initiatives to do your, your special programming for your district. No. That's not right, Plez. No, the, the charter dictates that it's $3,000. For council initiatives? No, for the expense account. So we should have 3000 for our expense account. Then we were asking for a separate amount of money for education and training and council initiatives. So, so I guess here's where I'm a little conflicted because um, attorney Denmark advised me that the 3000 was for everything. Um, I do remember Joel saying um, that um, travel education and training shouldn't be included in that. Um, And I have 1500 for education and training. And I have 2500 for travel and conferences. Okay, it, it seems like we I, I think in my mind, the conflict with the charter still hasn't been resolved. Well, that would be helpful. Um, does because, the... Because the charter explicitly spells out that $3,000 amount, correct? For 3000 right, for us and then 5000 for the mayor. But, but does the charter preclude us from adding to the budget separate amounts for education and training, right? Because that 3,000, the description of that 3,000 says to carry out our duties in our districts. It does not say for professional development or education and training. So I don't know, is Winston on the line? That can, can we not allow ourselves to do training and travel that doesn't take away from what we need to do to support our district? Yeah, obviously, obviously, if that's the case, we would probably never do training and travel <laughs> because we would want to make sure that all of our, you know, we could spend all of our expense account helping our district. So if we have to choose between one or the other, that would be definitely something we would like to know. Yeah, I, I um, have given a written legal opinion about this in the past. I haven't looked at that opinion in, in some time. And so I'd like to uh, kind of refresh my recollection on what my thought process was in order to be consistent in, in what I say, but I'm, I'm happy to um, provide what I wrote previously uh, to Travis and, and, and to the council um, as soon as I can find it. We have, we increased um, committee support to $1,100. I'm finding all of my notes, all of my stickies. Oh, that was our recommendation, let me say that. You repeat it, Councilwoman Grimes. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, I believe Councilwoman Grimes was was saying that that the committee support line item is increased to eleven $1 hundred dollars. Eleven hundred dollars. Yes, that's what we recommended. Okay, so where did we put the? Oh, let me go back. Education and training was fifteen hundred. And right. we had for the um, travel to conference and training, I have a sticky note here that says 50% to $2,500. Okay. 
I don't have any words written on it, but I have, I just have those um, numbers attached to that. Um, I get the, I get the feeling that um, when we, when we, when we get this uh, opinion from um, attorney Denmark, um, that it will um, quail it. <laughs> will tell us why it's a thousand dollars in each and then why we put the five thousand dollars under council initiatives um so to, to give to give you the extra money to do what, what you want to do within your district so that gives each of you an additional five thousand dollars for count for for support for each of your districts And we had 3,200 in operating supplies. No, we haven't gotten to that part yet, but that's all in these blue stickies. So here's, here's what I'm trying to still reconcile. There's there's an allowances line. I'm trying to make sure I'm not going to put my foot in my mouth here. If the charter says that we can only have 3,000 and 5,000, which, you know, if that's what it is, that's what it is. Of course, I can commit now that we're going to cut that education down a whole lot if we have to choose between our constituents. and right. Councilwoman, you're not going to take us back down this allowances um, rabbit hole, are you? I am, because you've got allowances in here. So help me understand there's a which, what is this 50, I mean, 531, 69 mayor allowances at 10,200. Okay. So trying to stick with the, with the philosophy here that I tried to stop the three and five. Let the record reflect. I tried to stop her. Let the record reflect. <laughs> she did it anyway. I did it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so where, 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 where are we stuck? Where, where, where are we stuck with here? Um, is, is, it, is it the, the $1,000 for the travel education and committee support? Is that, that, our, that our sticking point there? Um, no, I mean, I don't think, well, let me speak for myself and then I'll shut up and let everybody else speak. I don't think that's a sticking point for me. If the charter says it's three, then I can understand why you spread the three out. What I don't understand is why there's a line for mayor allowances and not a line for council allowances. So if we're going to stick with the charter says this is all you get, and then you divide that out, I can, I'll live with that. Maybe not exactly happy about it, but I'll live with it. But if we're allowing, a, a, if we're putting allowances in, then why aren't there allowances for the council, which would then allow us to do the things in our district that we want to do that now education and training is and travel is eating away from. What, but wasn't that the purpose of increasing the council initiatives? Correct. Mm -hmm. To 25,000. That's right. Yeah. Well, no, that's well, that wasn't the interpretation that we had. So, so we always, you always used council initiatives as things that we would do as a council together for in, like the census. That was something that we decided that that was we were going to take on and we were going to help obviously bring awareness and get folks to do the census and that had a cost to it so those in our mind that's what council initiatives was things we were going to get together and collectively support collectively program um that was council initiatives that was not at least in our mind when we set that a year ago and a year before that as a matter of fact it was not designed to be our expense account how about you change 53178 to council allowances And what would be the difference in doing that versus what we're suggesting now, which is to not eat the 5,000 from education, training, and travel? So if the, if the attorney's opinion is all you get is three and five and you can't add anything else, then how are we still adding something else? 
So we can just merely change and add allowances in and put whatever number we want there. Is that not a contradiction of exactly what the attorney gave in his opinion? We, we've gone through this, I think every budget cycle and that is that uh, we've gotten a couple of different interpretations and I thought we had settled on one. And that is that the $3,000 that council get and the 5,000 per mayor is set for each of us to use for constituent services. Uh, our training and traveling should be expensed in another, on another line. And I believe that's what was done for last year, although we didn't get a chance to utilize it because of COVID, but uh, that was my understanding that what we had interpreted the charter to mean. Now, if we're gonna get another interpretation, let's, let's see what happens. Well, I, I don't propose to give a, a, a new interpretation. That, that, that's why I wanna be very consistent. And I believe my prior opinion was in writing um, I wish I had anticipated that this issue would have come up and I probably should have anticipated that it was going to come up because it always does. But I want to rely on what I said previously so that we can have uh, some consistency. And I, I ultimately want to put this issue to bed. But the one thing I will say, though, was that um, how we define um, an expense or an allowance um, might not be as broad a definition as we might imagine, because I think that the, the concern is that everything that the council does would be defined as an expense or an allowance uh, in this section 2.07 of the charter. Um, but th that might be a more narrow definition uh, and allow um, there to be other budget items um, for other things. But Again, I, I'm going to dig up my opinion and I'm going to redistribute it, and that might lead to a, a, a more um, satisfying conversation. So, hey, in lieu of receivers, why, why don't we why don't we get what your recommendation is, um, so so that so that we'll have that in hand, and then as we get the additional information from the attorney, then we can we can balance that out, and then we can. Put, put in whatever we can put in, in here, okay? I, I think a lot of this came from the, the opinion of the internal auditor as well as our um, interim city manager at the beginning of the 20 um, budget, the 2020 budget uh, introduction. Um, uh, Councilman Turner, uh, if, if memory serves, we, we've been having this conversation every single year no, I'm just saying the, uh, the last, the last interpretation. Yeah, and well, and then, and then you know, then somebody can argue. Well, what about the one before that? Well, yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, we, we, we'll be we'll be subject to whatever the latest uh, whimsical uh, opinion uh, we received. So let, let's let, let's let's wait to receive um, what we got, what we can get from um, Attorney Denmark. Um, so, so that we can be consistent. But in the meantime, um, let, let's, let's find out what, what your recommendation would be um, in a perfect world. You get whatever you want. Councilwoman Cobble. Whatever you want. Sorry, trying to, I got a lot of things up on my screen here. Trying to juggle. Um, let me move this over. Open up. Okay, so in the ideal perfect world, we would have 1500 each for education and training. Okay. We would have our city council expense account from the charter of 5000 each, which would total 15. Three, 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 three. I'm sorry, 3000 each, which would total 15. Okay. Um, in committee support, we would have 1100. Okay. Now, is that following what we have? Because right now, what about this travel? And sorry, I skipped travel. In travel, we would have 1000. So, travel 1000, education and training. 
15. And then the committee support is 11? Right. 11. Okay. And then we keep the council initiatives at 25,000. Right. Okay. Oh, let me scroll. Right. Yep. Keep that at 25,000. Am I the only one that's not frozen? Uh, Maybe I'm frozen. Sure said that. And no one else. Yeah. yeah it looks yeah. like you're frozen, George. No, no, you, you're frozen. You're frozen. Okay. And um, and so what we'll do is we, we we've captured these these recommendations. We'll wait till we get something from the uh, from Attorney Denmark, and then we'll we'll just marry the two. Okay. And then we'll try to and we'll try to get some some good explanations um, for this as well, so that next year, twenty twenty two, we'll finally get it right. All right. I was knocked off line for a little while. What was that uh, final total suggested amount? So the suggested amount was for everyone except for District 4 to receive. <laughs> OK. You miss a little, you miss a lot, man. Uh, you know, these, these guys are cutthroat. So we, we, we settled on uh, 1500 for education. No, all the way up to the top. Travel. Travel's fifteen hundred, correct? Travel is one. Travel stays at one thousand. Mm -hmm. Education and training goes up to fifteen hundred, mm -hmm. and then committee support go goes up to eleven hundred. Right. Okay. I hope I'm up to date. All right. And then council initiative stays at twenty five. Don't forget the five thousand. I'm sorry, the fifteen thousand. That's three thousand times five for our expense account, our charter expense. Okay. Sorry. And so, um, Travis, if you're listening, then if we I if have that noted. Yeah. Okay. And what I'd like to do is, when we do that, let's break that out just like we have it broken out here. So, you know, District One expense, right? Expense, and then three thousand for each. Okay. And then that way we can see it all. And then just so that we're all clear, the council initiatives is something where the council may agree to use that collectively or, or at some point you guys may just say, okay, well, I want my 5,000 for my district, something like that. Am I hearing that correctly? Well, we, we should not say we want 5,000 for our district. It truly was designed for collaborative council initiatives that will be citywide. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Kumbaya. All righty. Okay. Well, let me go back to this to this little letter here. Um, and I think we've we, we've now we've now touched on everything in here, correct? In that uh, section, yeah. All righty. Um, uh, public works, the public works professional services line item will be increased uh, $150,000 to augment services delivered by DeKalb County, right of way maintenance, road maintenance, et cetera, to establish a higher quality of service delivered to the city of Stonecrest as we research the implementation of a full service uh, Stonecrest Public Works Department. Under public safety, we had the Cab County government requires a two year notification period to transfer public safety services to the city of Stonecrest. Fiscal year 2023 would be the tentative year that those services could be transferred. There's funded included in the public safety budget for potentially hiring a public safety official in the fourth quarter of 2021. So please, can you go back to public works? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm toggling. Um, here we go. Oh. Okay. Um, so, can you tell me what line we added the hundred and fifty thousand to? 
under public works? It's the technical services on the top line. And what, when you look and see what the number was previously, was it zero there or? It's 15. Where would uh, equipment purchases be? Equipment for? For public works. Uh, we wouldn't be purchasing any equipment. No, purchasing any, anything? Not, not this year. Uh, we wouldn't we wouldn't be purchasing anything until we set up the department. I just want to make sure. Okay. And okay, so it was fifteen thousand, and we've made it one hundred and fifty thousand. Oh, duh, it's sitting right next to it. Okay. Um, and you said this was to do. Sorry, repeat that for me. This was to do what? We were adding this in technical services for. To augment uh, service delivery by DeKalb County. I believe this was a recommendation from you, Councilwoman Cobb. Uh, ish. <laughs> yeah. Um, we we recommended to decrease um, a line and increase that line. All we did was increase that line. We did not decrease the other line. Um, so I guess that's what I'm trying to looking at my notes here to figure out. Yeah, because that note for me is under professional services to decrease it and add the 150 to the technical services. And then we had in repair and maintenance. Now, keep in mind, uh, we we will be having some conversations subsequent to this, um, talking about um, capital improvements uh, that that will be kicking off, and so we will definitely need um, you know technical services and professional services as we start to ramp up those um, capital improvement plans as well. So engineering design. Um, uh, just uh, have to start designing sidewalks and those type of things. Uh, and under professional, you said under professional services, right? Uh, some of it'll be be between professional services and technical services. Okay. And we're work, actually we're working on a, working on the uh, capital improvement plan as as we speak. So that's that's one of the. Um, that, that, that'll be one of our items for, for discussion in an upcoming working session um, as, we, as we kick this off, as we kick off the capital improvement plan uh, for, for the city. And so we'll be talking about not only just paving the roads, um, transportation improvements, so looking at intersections, uh, looking at sidewalks where we'll start putting our sidewalks in uh, also, some transit opportunities as well to for improvement to our MARTA. Uh, so we actually have a uh, looking at some things right now for the along that along those lines as well. Is this where is this where the splash management program might have fallen to handle some of this? Uh, so th this this is this is why I need to uh, speak speak with uh, Mr. Travis uh, Sims offline so that we make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, because it looks like we had the um, some infrastructure improvements, transportation infrastructure improvements from last year at five hundred and sixty thousand dollars, and you notice that that's now zero. And um, so we'll, we we need to we need to divide what SPLOS will pay for, as opposed to what we'll need to contribute out of our general fund for those. So I guess uh, just for me, some of the challenge I have with the public works area is, you know, I think we continue to, I'm going to use debate for lack of a better word, debate, you know, what the desire is of the entire body of when we would move public works over. And we, we did have a very, very robust discussion about this throughout the year last year even down to the point where we were trying to figure out what would be the millage implication would there be taxes raised for being able to support 
um, the public works. If we were bring, if we were to bring public works over, what would that millage look like currently? What what would we need to offset that to make sure we can deliver those services at the same, at at least at the same cost, hopefully with better to service delivery. And we really never landed um, on. We really never did land where we all kind of felt comfortable about, yes, we'll be able to deliver this service. Here's the cost of it. Here's how we'll offset the millage that we're pulling over. So it's, it, 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 I don't think that yeah, we don't and, need to and, plan for it, but I do think that we're not at a place where we are all comfortable with, yes, we're gonna bring it over. We're gonna bring it over in this year. And this is how we're gonna make sure that we can carry that cost. So it just makes me a little apprehensive to continue to add to that pot when there's still so many unanswered questions. So, you know, as we plan, it's, it's not I, like we're planning I, for like 2023, but we haven't really settled on, at least as a full body, yes, that's our target year. So now back into it so that we can, you know, meet our mark. We haven't actually settled on, yes, 2023 is gonna be the year. You know, we had this debate about the counties making us take it over. Yes, they are, no, they're not. You know, and so it, it still was just so much back and forth that we, you know, when we plan to take it over, we should back into it and we should plan so that we know this is our target and here's what we have to do to build up to that. But we haven't settled on a target so to keep adding to this pot when we're still just, like I said, you know, just still things are up in the air, makes me a little uneasy about where we're going with this. Right. Sorry, I missed something for a second. Which subject was that? I had to step out for a moment. We're talking about public works. Yeah, public work. So, uh, so, uh, so Councilwoman, let me, uh, let, let's, 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 let's go back to uh, 2020, um, uh, pre, uh, pre-COVID. <laughs> uh, I think these may have been early COVID uh, days when we, we we had those discussions. Right. And, uh, so unfortunately, um, well, fortunately, uh, how, however you want to cut it, uh, we started down looking. We started down the road of looking at you know millage rates and those type of things. Um, but as as we as we began to peel peel back the onion, we we re we soon realized that what we were planning on was really park, the parks and rec millage and it was not the public works so we were we were, we, we were last year was 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 not the time to be planning to take over public works this year uh, so you really you really need to give yourself a little bit more runway um, but before before you do that so um, so that so that's why we 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 so quickly pivoted from Looking at the, we were looking at. Remember when we first started, we were looking at the millage rate of public works and parks and rec. And where we landed was it was just the millage for the public work. Excuse me, for the parks and rec, because that was the service that, that we took on last year. And so the millage that that we instituted, uh, that we brought on, that was all. It was all uh, parks and rec. Um, the uh, public works discussion. Is is a little bit more in depth. There's there's some more uh, components that that are going to be need needed to be examined. Um, uh, we we have not, you know, the staff is still continuing to look at this and examine and make their make our put, put everything together so that when we do come to the council, we'll be able to make it. You know, you guys will be able to make an informed decision as to, you know, do you want to bring it inside or do do you not? But uh, last year was just not the time for that for that discussion, and it sort of got mixed in with with our parks and rec discussion. Now, moving forward, we there are still some things the city is going to have to do. Uh, we we did our transportation master plan. Uh, we we have the results from that, and there are some things that the city is going to be able to do, whether we're whether we have a public works shop or not. And we've already begun doing some of those things. So paving our roads, that is part and parcel. Uh, that, that, you know, that is a public works function, but because we're collecting SPLOS dollars, we're collecting LMIG money from the state, then, we're, then we need to start paving our roads and, and gosh darn it, our roads definitely need it. You know, every, you know I don't know about you, but uh, Councilman Rob Turner will agree that my neighborhood sure needs it. Um, 
and uh, every street around here needs it. So we, we need to be very diligent about what we're doing, uh, continue to be very smart with what we're doing. Um, there, there can't be any complaint about, you know, the, the direction or the use of, or however we're do, using our SPLOST funds. Um, but we just need to be able to come to council at some point, uh, hopefully in the near future with, with, with the complete rundown of, of what public works um, is, is going to entail for us. So public works is a little bit more, is more than just pavement roads. Public works is more than uh, sidewalks. Actually, public works is more than um, uh, intersections. Um, public works also includes right-of-way maintenance, as, as was mentioned in the letter. But there's it's that we didn't even consider and thought about more. So that's going to include us setting up a stormwater utility. What are the costs that are associated with that? What are the number of personnel that's included with that? What's the equipment and all the other types of things that are going to be included with that? And then how are we going to be able to build something that's sustainable and then also deliver a quality product to our constituents? So the, those are some discussions that, 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 we're, that we're planning to have. Uh, like I said, that, that's part of our planning for our capital improvements for the city. Uh, and we're, we're going to be building, uh, and when I say we, the staff, mayor, council, that's what our discussions this year are going to be, putting together a five-year capital improvement plan for the city of Stonecrest so that we will be in a position to, whether it's 2022, 2023, or never, however we decide to do it, we, we still need to put together a plan as to how we're going to uh, improve and use our SPLOS funds um, responsibly uh, for, for, for us, for our city. So considering that we're, we are not going to move with the, I guess move with, with the tenacity we were moving with when we were trying to combine and, and mix and mingle parks and recs millage and, and public works millage. If we've come to the understanding that we're not going to pursue that the way we were, that there, we need to plan that roadmap out a little farther, then what services are we augmenting for that $150,000 increase? If uh, not the public work services that we are now saying. Yeah, so, so we're still talking, uh, and once again, <laughs> let me remind you, that was your suggestion. To add right, that. no, no, so I, 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 yeah. trust me, I have that note here. So, and that was under the, but that was under the impression that you all were still trying to move us down, taking over public works oh, and, and, and we two are. years. So. Yeah, and we are. And so um, I'm not sure, you know, how, you know, whether we're very happy with, uh, with, with the amount of litter in our, in our community. There's a number one complaint on the front for Stonecrest is trash, white array trash, on the street trash, trash that blows in people's yard, trash that blows in other folks' Uh, 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 businesses. And if you don't mind me jumping in, Mr. Joyner, um, we're going to have to grow up and be a, uh, and continue to be a, uh, a city that provides the services that people expect. And we should have actually had this public works thing done this year, uh, as far as I was concerned, but that's okay. I understand the pace by which we're working. I'm certainly not looking at 2023 uh, uh, to have it done, we should, we should, you know, we should be, we should be at least, you know, some kind of acclimation to it by the uh, second or third quarter of this year. As in, in the same uh, designation, we have to give public safety. Uh, we that we go next month at the, the the latest to give Cab County their two year notice. So that first quarter twenty twenty three, uh, we're we're full bloom and ready to go. So uh, uh, if we had a number one issue with regards to what needs to happen, uh, particularly in Stonecrest, second to, actually second to public, uh, public safety first is trash. We, that's the number one call we get at City Hall is, a, is, is, you know, is, is, is about trash. So, uh, and that's under the arm of public works. Just my two cents. Um, may I add, um, well, just ask, of that $150,000, is there anticipation of a, uh, some type of an intergovernmental agreement with the Cab County to augment their services, or are we just going to kind of an ad hoc do what needs to be done 
uh, with it to help with some type of public works, be that trash pickup uh, or whatever. Um, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, once again, this this was a recommendation from Councilwoman Cobble. Um, right, but remember, I also recommended to decrease the professional services line to supplement, okay. to put more money into augmenting services and not into professional services. Um, so, and, and you gotta uh, tell so, the whole story there. Yeah. Uh, well, that 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 was. Yeah, okay. But we also need to keep in mind that last year when we were doing this, we had not, we did not have a transportation master plan. We now have one. And uh, so as, I'm, as I've stated again, we need to incorporate those results out of that plan into, a, into our budget. And so we do have, even though a, a fair portion of it does come out of SPLOS, the city has to make an, a, make an investment out of our general fund to improve the infrastructure for, for the city. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, without the well, lacking a recommendation, I would recommend that we use it to, um, I don't want to say beautify the city, just cleaning it up is going to make it uh, more beautiful, but to use some of that $150,000 to put in some type of a program to help uh, delitter the city. I, I agree 100%. Um, and, and, what's, and so let, let, let's, you know, I, I know there's a little, a little trepidation um, right here, but you know, I'd, I'd hate for this to be a, a stopping point for us to, you know, to, you know, to go around and around and around about this. You know, as I stated, we need to have a full discussion about what our capital improvement plan is going to be. Um, undoubtedly, part of that needs to be what some of what some of these public um, augmentation uh, plan is going to be, and and how how we'll work with the Cab County. They they are the folks that 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 I work with over there are very receptive to us helping out, taking on, and and doing whatever we can. Um, as, as we're standing up our city, um, they, you ask anyone there, you know, we are not, we're not collecting nearly enough revenue is being collected to adequately service what, what we want. And so we're, we're going to be looking for, um, we're, we're just, we're just going to make, in, make that investment in our, in our city. No, no different than uh, getting the can of paint out and painting the shutters on, on your house. Um, no, no different than maintaining uh, the lawn. Uh, you don't want them, you don't want to wait six weeks to have your grass cut. Well, then maybe you need to go out and get it cut every, make sure it's cut every four weeks, those type of things. Yeah, and I don't think we disagree with you, players. I think we were just trying to understand, yeah, especially, I, I, especially because the 150 was, <laughs> was our idea, although it, it wasn't necessarily adding 150 to the total number, but but with the same idea is that we thought we would put more emphasis and in, in resources into augmenting services, which is why we asked to move it to technical services and a little less emphasis on any other area of public works that we had not ironed out, right? We know for sure we want to do right away maintenance, which would include litter. We know for sure that we want to help DeKalb County keep our um, common areas keep the yeah. grass cut on a more frequent schedule than they're doing now. And so all of that was considered in saying, yeah, we need to put more resources into technical services so that we can augment what the Cab County is doing. And until we iron out everything else, we probably don't need to continue to increase professional services until we understand what it is that we're doing with that, with that service. So I just don't want anybody to leave with the impression that we're trying not to fund it. It was actually the very opposite. No, I'm, I, I'm not under that impression whatsoever. And uh, I'll be honest, I saw that uh, your edition of the 150 and, uh, and took it and ran with it. And, uh, and so, so there's the parts of it that we don't know are the additional costs that we'll need to put in under engineering and, and those type of things in order to prepare ourselves for the transportation improvements that'll come in down the road. So uh, I just had a meeting this morning with, with representatives from GDOT. Um, we have to prepare 
um, some of our streets. Uh, we have to get, we have to put plans in place for them to come in and actually create uh, and improve some of our intersections here in the city of Stonecrest. Um, we can tell them what intersections we want them to fix for us, but until you do the engineering and design, uh, there's nothing they can do. So that's what some of this, that's what a lion's share of this money will go to in preparing us so that when we're ready to institute and ready to go ahead and do these types of projects that the engineering is already in place. I, I, case in point, um, our intersection at the corner of Salem Road and Evans Mill Road, um, you know, we're, we're bought the, uh, that where we brought the property and we did it. We did an engineering study there because remember how everyone knows how hazardous that, that intersection is, right? And so we've, we've already done an engineering study there. Uh, we already have drawings and designs for what we need to do. Uh, and so when we're ready to pull the trigger, we already have the designs ready to go. And so we can just hand them over to uh, whoever's going to do that kind of work. And that, that, that is already out of the way. So what we have to do in order for the city to actually move forward with any of our transportation improvement um, items, we first must begin and make those projects uh, what they call shovel ready. And when they say shovel ready, that means you've done all the engineering, you've done all the design, you've done all the work. And so all you need to do is then find somebody to go ahead and implement it. You don't have to do that for roads because that's pretty much already set. You just pull up a uh, three three inches and you put down three inches of asphalt. But once you start doing sidewalks, I know we, we had a lot of discussions around, we need sidewalks all over the city. Uh, uh, less than 20% of the city has sidewalks. Well, you just can't put down cement and call it a sidewalk. You have to design it because it, it depends on, on the topography and it depends on the right of way and all those other types of things that go into it. So these are the things that we have to do to prepare ourselves to do it. So we just can't say, oh, we're gonna have, we'll have public works. Uh, well, actually it takes a little, you, you have to do some planning to, in order to do that. So we are, we are well, in, we're well, well in place to do those types of things. Um, when, we, when we begin to have our conversations on our capital improvement plans, I will be coming to you guys with a list of projects and we're gonna prioritize the projects and you're gonna say, okay, I want, uh, who, who doesn't want sidewalks down Farrington Road, right? Well, we got to do the engineering design and, and put all those kinds of things in place to do those kinds of things. So that, so that's, that's what that $400,000 in professional services will do. The $150,000 will, will uh, prepare us to augment the services that, that we're currently doing. And then regardless of when we decide to pull the trigger and, and bring on our own um, public works, we're going to be well in place and, and ready to go uh, with, with Okay. Um, let, let's uh, to keep keep it moving here. Did we have anything here? And uh, we also mentioned, oops, mentioned public safety. Uh, I don't know if anybody has. I I. I I did see a note from um, Councilman Clanton. It looks like he had to drop off, and um, so uh, did, did, do we. Do we have a? Uh, do we want to put a time box on this, uh, or do we just? Are we just going to let this ride until uh, we can't ride anymore? Well, I'd like to get through it. Okay. Hopefully yeah. we, we can, I mean, we're, I don't think we're going to hit every section, hopefully. <laughs> okay. um, uh, so hopefully we can power through here. All righty. So the, the next items we see are community and cultural affairs. Um, well, Plus, let, well, me, let, me, let me back you up some. Um, I know that's where you made changes um, in you all's recommendation, but I want to jump back to, uh, no, well, not jump back, but move you up a little bit into the finance and administration portion of the budget before you go past it. So technically oh, okay. we'd be passing it if you if we st jump to um, cultural affairs. Um, and before we go, may I ask a question, uh, uh, Councilwoman Cobble too? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Mr. Joyner, have we, have we done um, a study for public safety? Has that been finalized? Has that been done? I've been asked that question a couple of times and 
I've not been able to give uh, an answer with fidelity. Yes, we have. And uh, that came from the Carl Vincent Institute. And uh, we were looking, that's why there was a second budgeted item for this year uh, to be able to augment that study since that we're not coming on with public works for another two years. So half of it is already there, uh, Councilwoman, and the other half will be coming up uh, uh, this year. Okay, I'm asking about safety. Did, didn't Carl Vincent come in and do a presentation on the correct. at a council meeting? That's correct. Was that before I <laughs> got no, my you're here. Mm, okay. It was a it was um uh Adrian Bell. What what when when did he when did the gentleman come in to speak with us? I won't say that was in either October about October. Uh yeah, I mean, Brian yeah. had a couple oh, of questions for him too, I think. So he, he was here. It was, it was virtual, right? Right, it was. Okay. I'll go back to the meeting. Thank you. Yeah, Dr. Watson was his name. Right, correct. correct. Yeah. Um, I know, got you. Okay, so we, we, we went from, okay, so we did the mayor and council. Next section, city manager. City manager for the clerk. Well, pleasant. I wanted to go to the jump to the finance administration section, not not that far up back to city manager. Unless somebody else had something there. I didn't have any questions in that area. Uh, no. I just wanted to catch you before you went to cultural affairs. There were some in between public safety and cultural affairs. Oh, I oh, I'm still, okay. So you meant to go keep going down, but uh, okay. Okay. Finance administration. Yeah. Um, so the, what line is it? Uh, wrong page, sorry. Um, so I think when we first talked about, when we were first looking at this, the budget, um, we knew that we wanted to add some, some money for, what are we calling this? For the accounting system um for the erp and um we were trying to make a distinction between the line that was software and service contracts and then computer software so i think we we pretty much landed on software and service contracts was just money that we needed to add to to service those uh, softwares but the actual cost to purchase the software was down in the computer software line. Um, and so I think at the time, we were still trying to figure out what that cost would be. Um, so just wondering if, if our finance team, if they're still on the line, um, since it's been a couple of months now since we did this, have we narrowed down that, you know, we're close with 100? Do we need, are we, did we figure out, no, 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 we're kind of still far away from the, from the system that we desire to have. We'll probably need another 50 to 75. Cause I think I have a note here that um, we thought that might be a good price, but really had not had the opportunity to dig deep and to find the system that we really wanted and get that cost. Um, so are, are we, are we close? Do we need to add some to that? Um, obviously, that's extremely important for us to be able to have as, as robust of a system as we need um, to be able to handle our procurement processes, invoicing, accounts payable, receivable, and so on and so forth. So I don't want us to get too far away from getting close to that number that we need to be at. We don't know what that number is yet. That's next up to do on my to-do list is to aggressively um, pursue a, a system. Yeah. Um, uh, if, if I may, um, to, to, uh, to add, add a little bit more context to that, um, we, are, we are looking at more than just a financial system. Um, we are looking at a, uh, it, I, I think you mentioned it, um, Councilwoman, uh, we're, we're looking at something that's more enterprise-wide, uh, something that's going to touch just about every department in, the, in City Hall. And so we need something that's that will tie into our finance um, software, tie into our our finance portion, but that's mainly almost like a just a backbone for all the other stuff. So personally, I want us to be able to have our code enforcement tied into that, so that when they write uh, when they write a ticket, 
that ticket is followed in that system. Uh, when the person comes in and pays a fine, then that is reflected in our, in our system there. Uh, building, uh, when people do their building permits or do inspections, then we'll be able to collect and they'll go through that system. Uh, business licenses, when folks are doing renew and renewals, that will come through uh, that particular system. Parks and Rec, when somebody rents a pavilion at Salem Park, we want that to come back through our system so that we'll have a holistic view of everything that's going on in, in, the, uh, in the city. We can do a lot better planning and uh, we can and actually just uh, manage our assets a, a lot better and, and a lot more efficiently. So we, we need to get rid of our, uh, get a move away from the siloed systems that we have. Um, uh, we have some very antiquated, um, <laughs> and antiquated, I mean, these uh, is not far removed from using the abacus uh, to, to keep track of our, uh, of our finances. And uh, so we, we, we're going to be making a quantum leap uh, from, from, from what we're, what we're currently using. And um, so, uh, so that, that, that's, that's really uh, accounts for what part of the del delay is in finding a, a solution that that's, that's going to be um, all encompassing for, for the entire city. So do we want to leave that 100,000 or do we want to go ahead and anticipate we're looking at 200,000, go ahead and make that adjustment. And I, I, if we don't need it, great. But if we do, you know, it doesn't require a budget amendment or action of any kind to have to come back. I'll be honest, Councilwoman, this, this is one time when a, a budget a budget adjustment will probably be, uh, will probably be our, our, our best friend uh, because- uh, the, we, we really just don't know. Yeah, and, and okay. the technology and things that are out there are so wide, you know, varied. Uh, and and we're, we're gonna have to kick, we're gonna have to kiss a bunch of frogs um, here, uh, but before we um, land on something. So uh, we're, we're, we're making some headway, but I, I, I really want us to make sure we're doing our due diligence and make sure that, that, we're, that we're purchasing something that, that's, that's gonna be uh, scalable, something that, that's gonna you know, take, take, us, take us a couple of years down the road and, um, and really move us away uh, from, because from, uh, in, in a lot of cases, um, you know, we're, we're kind of hamstrung uh, with, with, with a lot of the systems that we have. And uh, it's, t it's taken a, a, an inordinate amount of time. And, and, you, and you know yourself, uh, Councilwoman, that, you know, some of your requests, it takes, takes a while to get, to get answers to things. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we really need to have a system where it's, where it's a lot easier for us to get in uh, get and pull answers out of it. So, okay. Uh, Mr. Deputy, if I may. Okay, go ahead, Joel. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, put the reminder out there, and I did tell um, Travis that um, subscription software as a subscription service or software as a service is now capitalizable by public entities. It was only capitalizable in the you, private you sector before, and but it's now capitalizable. So that means that SPLOS funds could also be available. Uh, for purchasing a new central ERP software system. Sweet, I think you mentioned that last time too, Joe. Yeah, I have that right on my notes, but I was gonna ask the question of Pledge. Has any, have you visited any cities who potentially uh, might be using something similar to what you're looking for so that you don't have to do the research? I mean, starting from scratch, any of the, especially- uh, yeah, so, so, so actually, we, we have we have looked at some other systems in other cities and so um, so that those are part of our consideration as well so that's that, that's helping out a lot okay I'm just work just thinking about the time frame um, so that we're not here six to nine months saying the same thing that's all oh yeah yeah and and it, it's I I don't think that we're we're that far off uh, because the uh, option uh, you know to, to buy something, uh, you know, there, there's there's some there's a there's a few vendors that do this extremely well, and um, so you know, you know I, I would, you know, I'm a, I'm a little biased. Uh, actually, this is this is my actually my background is in software development of uh, large scale systems like this. So um, so this is sort sort of near and dear to my heart. So um, I will probably be spending a little bit more time of my time um, working on this myself. So um, excuse me. So um, 
as, 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 as we move a little bit further and as, as we get along f further down the road here as well. Okay, efficiency matters, that's all. <laughs> Plus, that's all I had in um, under finance administration. Um, but I do have some questions under legal services, but that's all I had for finance administration. Okay. Legal services. Um, and I might have asked this question last time, but I didn't write a note. So I apologize for having to ask it again. But and maybe Travis, this is a question for you. Um, what is the difference in attorney fees and attorney fees slash other? So the, excuse me, the attorney fees line item is basically, you know, fees for city business or what have you. And then the attorney fees other is for um, if they have to do, I, I think that was for like representing council members and, and things like that. We just separated that out um, just to see what the, you know, the cost for the actual, I guess, city attorney business was, city business versus other things that weren't necessarily related to city business. I'm having a hard time following you there. Um, so just going back, looking over time, right? We spent 67,000 in other one year. Um, and then the next, we spent six, is that 6,000? Yeah, 6,000, 6,700. And so we were asking for 50. Um, so that's, you know, we went from 67 to 6,700 to 50. So when you say things that were re representing city council well, and w which we didn't do. Um, and well, I think I guess to to put it more bluntly, if I remember correctly, and forgive me because it has been you know three months or so, I think the rationale was, um, you know, lawsuits and things of that nature. Um, so if we're paying the attorneys hourly, would it still not be in? I guess I'm still trying to understand why we have this. Well, and, and then there are, there are cases as well when we use other attorneys, you know, depending on different other things, you know, there are some things that the city attorney doesn't necessarily cover, you know, like land purchases and things like that, where we have to bring in other outside attorneys. Okay, and so that's what we have. That's what we spent that sixty-seven hundred on the year before. If I'm not mistaken, I mean that's the year that we actually purchased. Well, there's only one year that we purchased property, um, so. I would have to go back and look. I wouldn't know offhand what that sixty-seven hundred was for. So I'd like to institute something, please, if you all don't mind. Um, I'm gonna. We're gonna. We need to. We need to take this as as late as nine o'clock. That's it. That, that'll be three hours. And as far as attorneys concerned, we're getting a Jimmy Jam break suit off us this coming up this year. We need every inch of that to defend ourselves. So uh, we should be no short of any money for uh, for legal fees because that's coming up. Uh, and 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 you all know several. Uh, 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 at least one particular uh, lawsuit that's uh, that's involved. So um, I'm going to ask that we go to nine. If you, we aren't finished by nine, then you need another session. This is going too long. So uh, I wasn't asking the question to to take any money away. I just first of all, I was just trying to understand the difference between the two. Um, my other question was actually going to be the 550,000, um, it's only what, maybe 40 grand more than the year before the year that we didn't have, um, a major lawsuit. So I was actually going to ask, um, 
well, I still don't quite understand the difference between the two. Um, but if we do have, a, we're now going into a second year of that same one, at least, uh, major lawsuit that, you know, did we actually, do we anticipate, is that number going to, you know, is that solid number, seeing that we, I'm sure we've exceeded that 40,000 by now, um, just on one lawsuit and the amount of time it's taken. But, um, but that's some of the reason why I'm trying to understand the difference between the two, because it's from here, it, I mean, it looks like this, this 550, right, will we split between our primary attorney firm and then our special attorney firm. And then I'm guessing that they even now this fee, attorney fees and other is even different attorneys. So trying to understand one, what other is. Um, and if both attorney firms are coming out of one line, do we have enough? Um, that was one question. One, and then two, what is other? What are we funding there? And actually going to ask you, it, for my comfortability, I would like to be able to see the attorney fees for our city attorney and then a line for, especially if other is not even this, um, the special attorneys and then other. At first I thought other was the special attorneys, but if other is not the assistant or special attorney, which by this number, I would imagine that it's not, um, we need to be able to see all three, if that makes sense. So you're saying, I guess, basically right now we have a city attorney and we have a, I don't know what you call a secondary city attorney. So you, you're saying you want to see the primary city attorney and the secondary, secondary city attorney and then anyone else. Right, right. Absolutely. Because if, if we have two attorney firms and there's still work that we're paying other attorneys to do, which I would imagine would be the other, then yeah, we need to see all three. I would, I thought that the other was the other attorney firm, but it sounds like it's not. So seeing that it's not, I'd like to see all, I'd like to see both attorney firms and then whatever the other is. Yeah, I don't think that's I don't think that's I don't think that's a hard ask or a bad ask to be able to see those two things separately and the other. I would have thought the other would have been the, the other, other right. uh, the other group as I mean the other attorney firm as well. But I would love to see just how we truly use that other line. Um, and what pushes the buttons to make it. Make us have to spin that, okay. And maybe this is knowledge that just I don't have, but like, I, I don't know until we start going down that road, I guess, like what, when you were speaking of lawsuits and we know what this one that is carrying on into this year and we can't foresee the future, but hopefully there aren't many other on the other side. But if there are, you know, are we paying both attorney firms for these added services i mean we both we pay them hourly um but i mean is it so you know if we're going to fund these lines understanding what role they play and then there is a, a third category for then just even different attorneys to do other things if you're talking about with land or you're talking about bond attorneys i mean if those things are not being handled by the, the first attorney nor the second attorney firm then we really need to distinguish how much we're funding for the primary, how much we're funding for the secondary, and how much we're funding for the other. Understood. And Travis, just do you have any idea on, um, I mean, we just using 
the hours billed from the prior year to develop what the projection is for the following year? No, we didn't. I didn't, didn't look at years. hours billed. I, I looked at actual expenditures. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess I should ask you that way because it's not like we're paying a different rate per project, I guess, hourly. So, yeah, if we, we spent... And I'm, I'm assuming that, that that's a total of the two, that first line, the 50, I don't know if you're looking at it, but um, 521.22, um, we have from last year's projection or last year's actual rather was 509. So that's the two firms combined? Yes. Since that's not other? Okay. Okay. So when you're, when you're going to, when you're doing that, will you please show me that what was the cost for the one and then what was the cost for the second from last year so i know what the breakdown is of the 509 basically just a uh, side comment and that is that once we were setting the city up, the attorneys let us know then that the fees would be uh, regular and kind of high to get set up. But once we were set up, a lot of those fees would uh, disappear uh, because we wouldn't have as much to do in terms of standing the city up. So uh, other than the potential for lawsuits, I would expect that number to start uh, declining quite a bit based on what was uh, presented. And to your point, Councilman Turner, that I'm kind of, that's why I'm kind of thinking the other line, I guess if, if, I think that's where Travis was going at first was that's like where we put money in case we're gonna have lawsuits, but the rest of it is standard costs for the attorneys throughout the year um and maybe and other attorneys like bond attorneys or land deal attorneys but i mean our primary attorney handled our land deal so <clears throat> well you all call these attorneys at will you send them information at will they, they prepare stuff for you at will so with you, uh, uh, Councilman Turner, I do agree with you. It should go down, but it doesn't because all six of us use them. And if you're going to keep a clock or a tab on it, then that's fine also. Uh, but uh, 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 things things come up uh, that that uh, you all call them direct. You don't go through your 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 deputy city manager. You you handle everything direct with the attorneys. That's got a clock on it. That's got a billing on it. So, Mayor, is it outlined who can do that and who cannot? I, I just need to know for clarity's sake. No, it is it is is it is not at all. But it begs the different or begs the answer that that uh, I was responding to Councilman Turner's query. Why uh, not that he asked that it was going down, but he, his statement or so it, it should be going down. But that's not that's why it's not going down. Okay, that could be uh, one reason, but still, um, I'd anticipate some adjustments as we go along. So it's something we simply have to watch. And if it is a matter of council calling for trivial matters, that's one thing. But if we need to get some uh, serious answers and we have no city manager to go through to get it done, um, then we have to do what we have to do. Well, Councilman, and it's not about not having a city manager. Not city manager is not an attorney. Uh, uh, and and I'm, I'm not seeing our deputy city manager not answer anything that any of us need. Uh, what I'm uh, pointing to is that the city manager can do a lot of things in terms of writing down um, resolutions, um, matters of that nature that would uh, prevent us, would save us from having to go to an attorney to get it done. So, well, uh, uh, we've tried to put the city manager in place a couple of times and you all wouldn't take them. So you can you can make that out of what you make it out of. Well, we can have a whole meeting on that one, but. Uh, okay. Anytime yeah. you like. Oh, okay. Well, I like to make sure that we um, fund the primary attorneys for as much as we need them for. Um, 
especially if uh, the council is going to continue to reach out to the attorney directly for the guidance that we need. Um, so seeing that the, the 509 appears to be both firms together, um, it's difficult for us to tell if that's equal amount of work, if that's more on the primary and less on the secondary, where the other comes in. So we definitely want to make sure that we have enough to take care of the primary, especially because they are doing things like land deals, like lawsuits. In addition to, um, they did a lot of work for the um, Parks and Recs um, millage fiasco that we had for a second. Um, so yeah, there. I mean, there, there are definitely things that uh, we need to understand the difference between the two and how the money is being spent. And we obviously want to make sure that the attorneys that we do reach out to the most um, are funded enough to be able to do what we're asking them to do from the top down. So I saw that number at 620 and, and I guess uh, something happened with the, the screen here. I don't see the, I don't see the, uh, uh, I don't know the, the whole budget sheet we was looking at, but that number, uh, if I recall correctly, the number for the budget amount for 2021 was 620,000. Correct. Was, was that it? Yes, there's 20 for professional services, which that was another question of mine is what is that? But yeah, the total. So just keep it, uh, <clears throat> uh, the, the cover all the bases that you all have talked about, keep it at 620 and keep it moving. Well, we've asked Travis to divide out so we can see attorney fees for the primary, attorney fees for the secondary, and then attorney fees for the other. And then we can- You can't do it tonight, Councilwoman. Yeah, I understand that. Nothing's, ha he's not changing it on the spot right now ain't it, for any of it. So the rec we're, we're giving recommendations. And so the recommendation was to split. So we'll add a line, however you want to do it, where we can see the secondary so that we can properly fund both lines. So it's not combined, so that it is separate and we can see what we need to fund in both lines. Well, in all three, really, because we still don't I just got quite know how we're using computer other. Died. <clears throat> I, I, can, I can do that, and, and based on um, 2020 actuals, I'll split the 620 however it needs to be split. And let me ask a question. Are we limited to the amount of usage uh, for the attorneys? For their services, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> as long as you're uh, however, however, however further your dollar goes. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Mayor, you made a statement. You weren't clear. Could you repeat yourself, please? I said uh, I was answering uh, Councilman Turner's. No, no, no. Before then, you looked at your. I guess you looked at your phone and you say you got a oh, message. Yeah, plus computer died. That's why. The, uh, that's why we don't see the. Uh, okay. Uh, all the rest of the thing. The only thing I heard was died and I just needed you to make that statement clear. Thank you. Well, we were on. Are we waiting for, sorry, are we waiting for Plaza to come back or? Not really. I'm, so, um, I'm sorry. I was talking. Adrian, can I share my screen? I'm sorry. I was on mute. Yes, you, yes, you can. I do not see the share button. Uh, it's a little green button down at the bottom right next to chat. But you have to Plaza. slide your mouse over the bottom of the screen in order to expose it. Plays is back. Oh, plays is back. Up. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna stop sharing then. You don't have to. Just when you a heart attack. <laughs> A computer heard heard y'all talking about me, so it decided to shut down. <laughs> Is Joel still on the line? Yes, I'm here. Preparing for the next section, which is economic development. I know um, there were some um, 
lingering answers to some questions and you may or may not have um, had a chance to follow up on them, but under the economic development section, um, we had a, a, a good conversation about trying to get an understanding for how we can, or can we, if we can, under, there was a um, cost for food, cost for a capital lease, which I believe that was the vehicle that um, economic development was asking for. So we left, I think we left with that conversation of having a question about food and having a question about the vehicle. Do you recall that conversation? Um, I, I'm sorry, I don't recall us having a conversation about food and vehicle under economic development. If you could please continue to refresh my memory. Um, so <laughs> let's start with the vehicle. Um, and let me see if I can pull my notes because we're relying on my memory, suburban. which is not that great either. It was the um, suburban. It was the suburban that was going to be used to um, So I think Clarence was saying was that, that they for wanted city to, tours, it's like for city tours or something like that. Right. They uh -huh. wanted to take like potential right. developers and mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. those seeking. Yeah. To mm -hmm. learn about the city more, but they wanted to. So he wants to buy a vehicle to do that. And we were talking about a lot of different concerns that may bring. And you were going to look into, well, I think we were both kind of under the agreement that there may be a better way to do that. Um, and we were going to kind of just look into it and come back to it. But I guess, I guess we don't, I guess we didn't. <laughs> right. And, I, I'm, and I'm sorry if that was something that we agreed upon, it slipped under my radar and I have not followed up on that. Okay. I, I will I will say if I can just add that um, I did look into I, I think one of the questions was regarding liability um, and so I mm -hmm. did check with our insurance liability provider and they stated that you know the person didn't necessarily have to be an employee of the city to drive a city vehicle it was like as long as you know we recognize that 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 person has can legally drive the vehicle that 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 vehicle would be covered under our um, liability plan. So I do have a couple of notes um, for the food. There was I wrote down that this is all permissible, not just entertainment, but okay to use tax dollars to secure business. I don't know if I had a question mark there. And then for what you just said, Travis, it was, that was the last thing on my page was check with the liability, check for liability coverage. But there was also lease possession, both in the name of the city, uh, usage language, strong internal controls. So I don't know if that jogs anybody else's memory as to the conversation we were having, but those are the notes that, um, the notes that I have on those two pages, Joel, I don't know if that'll jog your memory or not. <laughs> So that sparks a little bit for me about food. And Joe, I think we were having a discussion about the description of this was wanting to pay for lunch or dinner for potential developers or, or those who were looking to do business in the city that mm -hmm. they wanted to have um, the ability to pay for those folks' lunches and dinners. And I think we were trying to get to, you can probably host a, an economic development event, event and right. cater it, mm -hmm. but that you could not just pay for lunch for potential developers. Right. We were looking at, um, you know, having economic development, like you said, events, uh, trade shows, uh, expos, things of that sort um, that advertise the city. Um, but I know the vehicle definitely was about, uh, VIP potential investors and things of that sort, which under a city's marketing plan normally would be allowable. But if you're talking about food and entertainment, um, 
I think we were talking about specific events. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a yeah. and then I want you to jump in. Sure. Um, you know, folks, <laughs> I, 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 you know what, Clarence, you do it. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, having, having been in sales and business development arena most of my life, there have been many occasions where I've been out with, I've been out with, uh, with business potential clients and we've stopped to get lunch. And just as a show of, of, uh, of concern for their, for their business and, and, and uh, desirability of their business, I picked up the lunch tab for, uh, for, for that lunch. Yeah, th this isn't intended to be anything that, was, that would be a wide scale or would be anything that would be terribly expensive. It's just a, just a line item to be able to, to, be able to, uh, to monthly have, a, have uh, some money to be able to cover that. I'll be be honest with you right now. There have been there have been times uh, that I've taken I've taken clients out for as, as in this capacity, and I footed the bill myself. You know I haven't even haven't even uh, because we don't have a line item for it. I haven't even expensed it back. But it's just it's just a, a just a, a a cost of doing business in some of these cases. That if um, if there's somebody who's worthy of, and and, and all business is worthy, but somebody I'm I'm I'm, I'm uh, out with that I think it's. You know, we're we're stopping by Panera and picking up a picking up a uh, up coffee and and you know and, and something of that sort. That I would rather not have them go in their own pocket to be able to take care of it. If that's if that's something that's that's uh, that's seen as as being um, as being impractical, then I certainly will will uh, will take that will take that to heart. I would prefer to see that, and you know, I'm just going to jump in here. I would prefer to see that in a reimbursable expense line item. Um, and those reimbursable expenses, and you could just put whatever types of uh, uh, do's and don'ts according to that expense. Um, and that would be uh, solely under economic development. Um, and so that I believe that classifying it as that, classifying it as a separate line item of food, um, basically one, restricts you to only buying food and two, um, puts, uh, Puts it shines a light on um, okay when we do have expos and when we do have you know general events where does that expense come from um, so I would rather see that as it as you've explained it which is um, you know a discretionary marketing expense or a reimbursable mm -hmm. expense account uh, with those uh, parameters put on that account and it could be for six thousand dollars. Um, I don't have a problem with the number. I think that's a modest number, um, you know, over the course of a year for the kind of business we're talking about. But I think it's the presentation that might be the issue. How do you feel about uh, miscellaneous, Joel? Miscellaneous, I believe, is too far outside of a description. I believe reimbursable um, expenses um, would be better because then Clarence lays it out. Clarence asked for the reimbursement is under economic development. Um, no must, no fuss. Uh, do you do you mind if I if I uh, go back a little bit to the to the uh, to the vehicle to the vehicle part as well? One of the things that we look that uh, I think is a is a major concern and the reason why we need to take a look at at a, at a vehicle for that is when you mentioned the liability insurance associated with it. Is also the liability to um, the other liability portion as well. When I, you know, as I've gone out and and uh, and and taken people around the city, I've used my own vehicle to be able to, to do city business. If there was, um, you know, if there was any um, anything unfortunate that might happen, you know, then you know while while we're while we're doing that, then I'm the one that assumes the liability on any any uh, costs associated with any unforeseen occurrence that may take place. And that was one of the main reasons why in looking at that, as I'll be doing, would be doing only city business to be able to take a look at a vehicle for that purpose. So, uh, uh, Mr. Boone, $10,350, that's not enough for a capital lease. Um, you need to be in that uh, uh, 13 to 15 range. Uh, by the time we pay for uh, the, uh, uh, the gas and the GMA insurance, 
is is, is going to be in that you know 1200 month, uh, or so a month range so you, you need, that number needs to come up a little bit okay I think that's just the so principal me, amount. Right. Claire, can you okay. scroll down a little? I think there's a interest line, or it should be. No, that's the that's last the last line, line there. Oh, um, but I think to your point, Travis, um, that may have been a mistake on my part. Then, well, if we're talking about getting a leased vehicle, um, that hopefully, well, first let me ask this. I'm, I'm assuming that since you're using your own vehicle, that there mm -hmm. aren't enough vehicles already at the city for you to be able to use. Uh, those are those are vehicles only use only um, allowed for Jacobs employees, and I don't have access to uh, to those vehicles. Okay, so this would essentially be our first city-owned vehicle or leased vehicle, I guess. Um, in this case, you're asking for a lease, not a purchase, but um, this would be our first city least vehicle. So I would hope that we would also have a fuel card of some kind where it takes away having to reconcile what amount of gas was spent on city business and what amount of gas was spent on personal business. So if you're in a city car, that's they're only city miles. If you're having mm -hmm. a city fuel card, it's only fuel for those city miles. So the odometer would match what's on the vehicle and what's punched in on the card when you're fueling. So that would not be wrapped into the cost of the capital lease. We would need to have a fuel card to tag along with that. Um, so if that is the price that you have searched around and got a quote for, for the actual lease, then I think that's the appropriate number. Now, if we need to add a line and Joel, I don't think I would add it to reimbursable because obviously we're not going to be reimbursed and he'll be used in a card or they will be used in a card. Um, we would need to account for the additional insurance that I'm assuming we don't carry now because they're Jacobs vehicles. So I'm assuming that Jacobs pays for the insurance on those vehicles. So if we're going to have our own, we would need to account somewhere for and maybe it doesn't go under economic development. Maybe it goes under a more general city line. Um, but we would need to account for the insurance and then a need to account for the fuel. But I don't think that needs to be wrapped into the capital lease line. Um, uh, Councilwoman, um, this 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 is your area of expertise. You isn't know it, it well. <laughs> so so you know where I I'm going. So you know where I'm going. What do we need to put here? What needs to go here? So we we had a capital lease amount. Then we need a we need a line item for uh, fuel and fuel and maintenance, and we need a line for insurance and, and interest. Um, uh, am, 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 did I miss? Yeah, anything? I mean, yes. I think if you're if that's the cost for the vehicle, and I don't know what vehicle that is. If that's ten grand, uh, you're probably looking at what a small SUV at ten grand um, for the lease. I don't know if that's a step down lease, a step up lease. I don't know if that's open ended, closed in it. So, I mean, not to nerd out on fleet, but I don't know all what what wrapped into how you came up with that number. But whatever the number is, just for the vehicle lease, I would put that there. And then certainly Travis can decide the best place to put all the other things that come with it, like maintenance, fuel, insurance, um, wherever that's best suited in the budget. So. Councilwoman Cobble, Councilwoman Cobble, I'm certainly leaning on your on your expertise in that area. When when I when I typically go out and uh, and and have someone uh, a developer that that we're looking at the area, typically they have at least they they will be at, will be at least two people on their team, if not three. And then I usually then quite often I'll bring uh, bring Will Settle with me as well. So we're looking at four to five adults. So you know if we're, with that in, with that in mind. Considering what the mayor said earlier, we that, that's the reason why we're looking at a at a suburban for that for that case. And that was ten grand. Uh, well, I, it's it's been a while since I bought a car, and so I don't. I'm, I'm depending on depending on uh, on on mayor, on mayor Larry's suggestion and your and your expertise to be able to come up with a number for that. It's going to be. Well, we have some wonderful statewide contracts um, oh, that are already out there. That's that's what I was going. Council. <laughs> piggyback off of. Mm -hmm. Here we um, go. 
when, when are you going to bring up the, the hookup? <laughs> well, no, no, no. <laughs> I thought you go to jail. <laughs> um, but Travis is more than happy to go on the statewide <laughs> contract website. Um, he and G, I'm sure, know it well. And mm -hmm. look for the co-op that's there uh, and piggyback off of whatever the costs have already there for you. You don't have to do any work. You just pick mm -hmm. and, and, the and contract you want. And type in, I know Jasmine Cobble. No, no, don't put that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, being that I am a car aficionado, uh, I've owned more vehicles than more people have owned shoes. Uh, that number needs to be 13. You're not going to get a, a, a Tahoe or Suburban at 10-3. Well, Clarence, do what you... Um. Do what you got to do to get to a solid number. It may be, it may be higher than that. I mean, it's suburban. Well, is what, 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 we need, How is the, what we need to do tonight is make sure we have the line items that need to be here, right? So <laughs> the, 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 how much it's going to cost? I mean, whatever. The, yeah, find out what it is. Drop the number in there. Just account okay. for fuel, so maintenance, we, and insurance. I, you know, I would just like to leave tonight in the next four or five minutes. Um, Make sure we got all line up. So we need to make sure we have the fuel and maintenance cost in there. We need to have the insurance cost in there. We need to have the uh, what? What am I missing? That's it. Fuel maintenance insurance. Okay. And then true up whatever your cost for the lease is. Okay. And then upgrade to some uh, cold blooded twenty four inch rims, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> you won't find that on state contract. I promise you that. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Hope, uh, uh, and I am most certainly sure our recommendation uh, note takers have, have uh, made, made a note of that. Okay. Can we? Uh, uh, Mayor Larry, I know you, I, I'm sorry, uh, please go ahead. No. Mayor Larry, I'm sorry. I know you said uh, let's end at nine. Well, maybe we can end with the public at nine, but you said that we could talk about uh, the dates for our. Um, retreat so could we hang back and do that before uh we get away well uh, since we're at the end of one category and we only have uh <clears throat> about four minutes left we can do that right now okay well i mean i i, I don't want to stop any other council person from asking questions or doing whatever until your nine o'clock uh cut off but uh, i just wanted to get that to you before um okay quickly away yeah, and and actually, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, to to your point, uh, Councilwoman Grimes, um, we wanted to make this as easy as possible, and didn't want to um, burden burden us with finding additional dates. And uh, so, we're our, our proposal uh, was going to be that we would use the next two um, working sessions, uh, the one from uh, February and the one from March, uh, to uh, continue this conversation. And then also begin to delve into the delve into the next ones as well. Uh, and I throw that out there for consideration. You know, with with, with the council is you know do, does that work for you to um, since since our working sessions are now going to be open ended. Um, you know, can we commit to maybe an hour hour and a half of, of those working sessions just for this you know these type of budget discussions for, for the next uh, two possibly three months. Um, what's happening with the mayor and council retreat? Is that what you're saying, too? What are you saying? That's, about? What, I, that's what I was talking about. Right. No, it was separate. That's, it, that's a separate conversation with, with Mr. Joyner. Oh, okay. Something separate. Oh, you're yeah, speaking my, of finishing this budget. Yeah, Plez is speaking of finishing the budget. I'm speaking of mayor and council. Yeah, Correct. Right. Well, the question was about um, making this a part of the work session, and uh, you speaking of just an hour dedicated to this budget discussion, uh, might it eat up the entire work session? Okay. Yeah, here's the bread. bread. Once again, our working sessions are open ended, and um, so um, you know we can we can uh, dis discipline ourselves and and uh, forge in. And, <laughs> Okay, um, if it's just for the the budget, I could I could go along with that. And if we need to call another meeting in between, 
based on our progress, we still have that option. Can we put the hour and hour and a half on the front end? Yeah, that, 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 was, that was my suggestion. Let, let's, kick, let's kick the meetings off with this. And, uh, and, and if you recall what, ja what uh, Janice was, was talking about at the top end, you know, that we, we also want to uh, begin, um, we, we want to complete this project for the fiscal year 2020. We want to start planning for the, excuse me, 2021. We want to start planning for 2022. And then I also want to make sure that, that we begin our planning for our capital improvement plan uh, for the city as well. Um, so, you know, I'm thinking that, you know, we're, I think we're, 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 I think once, once we get into it, we, we should, we should be able to move, move, move pretty swiftly through and, um, and uh, you know, tap, tap okay. that next couple of months. I'm with uh, Councilman George Turner. That's fine with me. I'm good with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that too. Um, put it on the front end, spend an hour and a half, move on to something else, and hopefully hopefully we can really wrap up 2021 then, um, or at least wrap up the discussion, and then I guess you'll send out the recommendation, um, and then we'll have to, you know, decide right, how right. we're going to settle on whatever we're going to settle on. Um, so I'm fine with that. I did want to mention, though, Plez, just in general, since we have the since Jacobs did give us their, because when we were doing this, we didn't have it. They did give us their letter, um, budget, I mean, their contract letter. Mm -hmm. um, and they did not uh, ask for a 5% increase. The only thing, you know, it was what's in the contract is that built in increase. Um, and so they didn't ask for anything in addition to that. So if we can make a note to go back through and make sure that we, accommodate for that change right 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 yep yep and actually I've, I've had that discussion with uh with travis earlier today and so we we've uh, we've actually already calculated what, what that's going to be and uh, so we'll we'll, we'll we'll reflect those changes uh, as okay well. and have and i don't know if, if i know we talked about it last time i don't know if we have numbers yet but we did talk about that um that market that market study um to find you know to put some money in for that market study for salaries and whatnot um but we want to also may add to that so i don't know what that number is going to be but add to that to really to get um a, a professional service or consultant whatever you want to call it um to help us start to plan the human resource side of bringing those positions over um so one the market study was just to figure out what the salary was but that's just one part of it we also need the actual work plan to move the, the personnel and then the service over to the city. So we wanna make sure we, we put some money in the budget to be able to start that process. Okay, that makes, makes perfect sense, makes perfect sense. And, and, and Councilwoman Cobble, I'm still waiting for you to call me a genius. You are a genius. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know what for, but you definitely are. <laughs> Remember I put in the 5% and I said, okay, it's not gonna be more than this. <laughs> It may, it's going to maybe less, but it's not going to be more. And You're see, right. It was yeah. wholeheartedly 100% less. Are you there? You are a genius. We knew okay, it all along. Um, Mr. Jonah, I'm in agreement with the, um, with the and budget. Now, and now Councilwoman Grimes is just going to throw some cold water on me, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, I'm in, I'm in agreement with the um, uh, uh, getting the budget done, but I sure hope that we don't uh, go past February not having this budget completed, so... That's just my condition. Okay. okay. Uh, that, that, that will call for some discipline, right? That I have. So noted. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd like to uh, get this uh, mayor council retreat done ASAP. Um, let's see, is, uh, Ms. Janice, you still on the, the line here? She's muted. Uh, yes, sir. I'm here. Okay. Uh, this is something that, uh, I thought would be best facilitated certainly by you. And, um, I'm looking for time and dates from the council and what went and, uh, um, 
because for us to move forward with all of what we want to achieve and talk about, we got to be as close to on the page as, as we can. Because nothing else is going to work without this. So what's your, what's your, what's your suggestion, uh, Ms. Jackson? Uh, yeah, I, well, uh, two things to consider. Uh, we could uh, attempt to do this as part of those work sessions. Just keep going. Hopefully, as Councilwoman Grimes indicated, we'd like to finish 2021 in the February session. And then uh, we could start uh, in the March uh, work session uh, to do to talk about a, our goals and so forth for 2022, or we could set aside another day, whatever works best for the mayor and council. I'll March is too far out. Too far out? You want to do it March early? Too far out. Okay, so you want to get it done within the next month? I do, because before I appoint another uh, committee or confirm any committee or move forward with anything, um, it, this is going to predicate on our joint meeting. I'm not doing a thing until we get this done. Yeah, and and uh, may, may, may I add, um, uh, and Janice, if, if you would, um, it, it may be a benefit to us all. Uh, you know, based on your past experience, can can you help help us with you know the concept of of a retreat and you know what we should be trying to accomplish through through the retreat? I know I know we called tonight a retreat. Uh, this is, you know. Yeah, yeah. This is more of a, a budget work session as opposed to a retreat. What I would want to do as part of a retreat would be to spend a good deal of time identifying council and mayor's priorities. So we make sure that whatever budget decisions we make for 2022 are in line with those priorities as identified by the council. I would love to walk us through an exercise where we identify areas, for instance, where we believe our services are strongest, areas where we leave our services may be weakest, and that way we know where we think we should place additional monies in order to shore up those areas. It's where we may be weaker. Also, I would like to incorporate an exercise that was completed by the staff back in December. Uh, the Jacob staff worked with myself and Pledge to do a two-day session with staff. Uh, we called it the operational excellence exercise, uh, but we went through all of the major services and processes that the city offers through each one of those departments and came back with action steps on each one of those things. And those things would require some money as well. So I would like to share that with you and integrate that into our total exercise. So I like to think of budget retreats as an opportunity to enhance our understanding and an opportunity to think big picture about where we're going in the future, You know what our goals and objectives are and how we allow our finances to make sure that we meet those goals and objectives. Well, I see a Saturday coming on. This can't be a 6 to p.m. to 9 p.m. You know, cram after work session. Okay. Yeah. Usually they're done over two days. Sometimes I've seen them two and a half to three, but normally they are done at least a day and a half, most of the time, at least two days. So, can you, can you help me understand the difference in, in what we're talking about? Because maybe I'm mistaken and maybe I'm misinterpreting the, the, the ask, but what I thought you were explaining in the beginning of the work session, and it sounded like what you were just kind of continuing to explain, was more uh, of a retreat to prepare for the 2022 budget, our capital um, improvements, our capital plan. Um, to me, sounds like something much different than what the mayor is asking for. So are we still talking about a retreat to help us build the budget and our goals and plans for capital improvements and our in our master plans and all that fun stuff? Or are we talking about like a mayor council retreat where we get into how we're going to work together and take all these kind of fun little personality tests and come up with a new strategic plan? And I mean, so help me understand, is that two separate desires or we're talking about one? Because preparing for a budget seems to be much less um, retreat-like in, in the sense that I thought um, the mayor was asking for, which is much different than what you were describing. B. B. Well, now well, I don't know well, which one B was. Yeah, your second, your your second explanation. 
The second explanation is what my expectation is with regards to being able to find out what our collective goals are, um, where we're going, what are we trying to define our, you know, very specific roles and responsibilities of what we're doing. Uh, um, um, now, if there's some budgetary items that are in there, that's fine. But um, this is uh, um, this is more planning about ourselves and what our expectations are and, and where we want to go as a city. You know, in, in working together as mayor and council, that's what the, that's what my goal is for this. And there's some financial <clears throat> or budgetary items that uh, uh, Ms. Jackson had mentioned that's attached to it. I'm you know fine with that. But the the crux of the goal is to. Uh, leave away with being on as one accord as we can. Ms. Jackson, that, that definitely sounds like something a lot different than what you were describing. Uh, and I, one of the things that I was planning to do as a part of this was to talk to each council member to make sure I understand what your expectations are and put something together around that. Um, I think what I was doing was describing budget retreat because I had heard so much from various ones of you at, at times over the last month and a half say we need to have a budget retreat. Uh, I think having a session where you all talk about your goals will get us to a point where hopefully we can accomplish both. You know, you talk about your goals, you talk about how you work together, but you can't fund any of your goals and objectives unless you shape your budget in a way that responds to what your goals and objectives are. Does that help? Not really. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I understand. It still sounds like two distinctly different retreats, but we'll try it. We'll go for it and see where we land. I mean, just level set your expectations that uh, you all are trying to make a hybrid of the two and we'll see if it works. Hopefully it will. Would you prefer to have them separate? I'd prefer to understand with the expectations. So when I come in the door, I know if we're talking about how to get us as people to be on one accord, or if we're talking about how to get our finances to match our plan for the future, for the city's future. It, that's what I would like to know what, you know, not the, yeah. the mayor's explanation sounds a whole lot different than yours. Okay. Um, so and maybe it's me and, you know, we'll leave it at that. And I can just try to figure it out as we go along. And the best I'm just being candid. Okay. And, and I appreciate that. That's why I asked. I think the best thing we can do is I'll have one-on-one -on -one conversations with each one of you to try to figure out what you feel like is needed. And we'll design something around what the consensus is among the board about what we need to do. How's that? Wait until you talk to us before we get a date in place. I, I would like to go ahead and set the date now, That's if at all possible. That's fine. Are uh, you speaking of the first date is a um, eight hour, six hour, four hour? Mayor, Larry, I think I heard you say you definitely want to set aside at least a full day at this point, right? Sure. At least. So then and we're looking at a Saturday. We'll start I with our we're looking at a Saturday. Well, February, February 13th and 20th are probably out because that's Valentine's weekend and I definitely uh, appreciate you all, but it's not where I want to be yeah. on Valentine's weekend. And then the 20th is always uh, very special and I won't be able to be there until after maybe one o'clock on that Saturday. So those are just my obstacles. Uh, the, the 13th, I won't be available to probably after 12, we're going to do our DCE breakfast, uh, Zoom meeting. So it will be after 12 for me on the 13th. Well, uh, how is the 27th, February 27th? I'm fine. Better date for me. I don't, I think see, I don't see a conflict. And we might run over into that Sunday if we need more time. I don't know if anybody has it, but at least we have a Sunday next next door to it. So I'm good with the 27th. I okay. can park the 27th and maybe half of the 28th. Mm -hmm. I think that's good. Okay. Okay, hey, Mayor, you um, any other feedback? Um, no, it's just, I just want us to be on 
going in one direction, all on the same page, and everybody's asking for their committees, everybody's asking for their monies, everybody's asking for people that want to get paid to do stuff. I'm not doing any of that until we get this done. I'm not doing any of that until I get this done. We're gonna all going to be rowing the same boat this time. Like I said, the first day I was back, I'm not going to fight y'all. Just not going to do it. Mayor, I'd like for you to be clearer on what this is, but we don't have to do it now. But I'd really like to know what this is. This, this is, this mm -hmm. is, when I say this, mm -hmm. when I, this retreat, this information, this one accord, this goal setting. That's what I mean by this. What Ms. time? Jackson, I would just ask that if we're going to do it virtually, can you build in some breaks and some lunch yeah. since we'll all we'll, be at home? We'll we'll work in a schedule. Once I talk to everybody, I'll have a goal of getting out a complete schedule so everybody knows what to expect by the time we show up on that day. Let's okay. tentatively right now say we're starting around nine thirty. How's that? Let's tentatively nine thirty. We'll work from there. Okay. Okay. Uh, one 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 complication are uh, virtual. Um, in person, is, you know, if, if possible to find a venue large enough to, you know, socially distance. I'm team virtual. No way in the world I can come. Uh, okay. Mm -mm. I, I beat it one time. Mm -mm. I, oh, no, I got to get my second shot. I'm not doing that. And they're not giving me one yet. So I can't. I can't come in. You're too, you're too young. I'm <laughs> virtual. Okay. 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 So just be me and Tammy there. Oh, no, no, no. You see me shaking my head. No, 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 no. Tammy's not Rob coming. Rob can be there because Rob's about to get his second shot. Yeah, and George might have his turn by then. Come to my sister. Come to my sister. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fine with me. Okay. All righty. Please uh, be on the lookout. I will either call or email everyone to get a time schedule to talk. And uh, I will lay out a a plan from there, like I said, so everybody knows what we're doing when we show up on the 27th. Okay? Thank you very much. All right, fine. Sounds good. Awesome. Okay. Players, anything else? We're good. That's that's what I wanted. All right. Mr. Bell, you have the honors. Sir, have a good night. All right. All right. Good show, y'all. Good show.